my least favorite genre. And we're back. For part two. <laughs> What's your least favorite genre? Actually, it's platformers? Really? Yeah, oh, I take very little truth comes I take out. very little pleasure in them. I don't <laughs> mind them. They're not bad. I, I'd but say it's just not your I'd thing. say number one least favorite would be um... <laughs> Okay, I should play right. first anyway. Yeah. Or, or no, Darcy. 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 Yeah, Darcy could play. Yeah. I'll, I'll gonna... set you, man. Don't worry, you get I'm There's no there. risk in having me play a few times because yeah. uh, you you have to blink at some point and you might as well do it. Look at this yeah. cat. <laughs> look at this look at this pixel He's cat. So happy, man. I think oh, my sorry. least favorite oh. sports games would be number one, oh, platformers number two. Sports it, games first? It, for, it is my least favorite. Well, that golf game though. Was, was golf game was good, but that didn't feel like that didn't feel like a sports game. That no. felt like a tactical like. There's there's sports games and there's sports games. When it's like ah. if I had to play football, sports oh. games, I just don't even understand football. Football, so basketball, I, baseball. Some, it's just taste. basketball. I don't mind. Baseball, I don't mind because it's just it's simple. It's simple to understand. Yeah. And are hockey, you, hockey you, sports is really good. I cannot say that I understand the mechanics of. It's that. part of the joy of Nike and. Okay, we got some donations oh. that have come in. Oh, sick! That we're gonna read out. Uh, oh. Richard, don't have a last name out there. It includes last names. That's okay. Richard donated fifteen dollars. Thank you, Richard. Richard. He says, "I love me some Atari." Don't we all? Yeah. That's why we're all here. Thank you so much, Richard. And, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'll do it. I'll do it. No, it's, it's a little hard. hard. Uh, Matthew donated $10 no. to the Stellathon. Matthew says, thanks to the team for providing a great, <laughs> hey, providing a great tool for 2600 development and retro emulation. Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> I, every developer out okay, there, well. please, please, please let it reset with the button. It's just, <laughs> it's. Quality of life, friends. Quality of life, yeah. That's what it is. Please build that in. I think this is the newest version, so... <laughs> it also makes your game easier. Yes. Uh, no, no, it's not hard. Dude, James is going to clean up. Just you wait, man. I've seen him, like... Yeah, we haven't... Get pretty far We in haven't this. yet beat this game, but no. we've gotten very close. Very close to it. Um, by we, I mean James. <laughs> Are we beating... Oh! Oh, we're behind. No, we're not. We're still good. Okay. okay. Next game is Deep Stone Catacomb okay. at 4 p.m., which is fun What am I hell. supposed to do here? You're supposed to, so that's you're supposed a rope. to dodge them and land on this rope. That's a rope. Oh, okay. So you just have to get, it get up there. No! <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, it's happening. Reset. It's a real thing. Okay. <clears throat> On my favorite, I like Prince of Persia as a platformer, technically, and I like uh, that. How long does the GoFundMe go? Ah! Uh, forever, till I stop it. So, no. I'll probably... Forever! <laughs> forever! Forever, Dan ABC. I'll probably stop it after the weekend. Or on Wednesday, let's say before uh, the next Nut show. Splendid says that the console should be sitting ah. beside you. Yeah. <laughs> or next to you. It should be, to but... Be more, uh, why am precise. I terrible? Because you watched us play. This is some bad mojo. But, I will, but it also can't be underestimated that that's also part of the fun of a marathon. But also one of the issues we're going to encounter is as the marathon continues, our skill set will drop. Because there's, it's, it is, there's a, fatigue is a real thing. It doesn't it matter. Is. It doesn't matter like how good you are. If you do something for 12 hours, yeah. you're going to get bad at it. Yes, you are. Unless you're doing like a grinding game. Oh my um, God. Then... I mean, you are. I mean, you are. You are a bad kitty, of course. Yes, well, he is. People like you. You don't have to run away. No, he just has to be good. That's very hard for him to be good. Well, he's good by, like, a real definition, not by your The thing about definition. Pixel Man is he's such an attractive cat that all he has to Gets do is show up. It. And he's and he's already a hero, so it's like yeah, that's the thing. The pretty people versus Atari is like he knows he's got makeup for uh, what? Atari is a <laughs> gorgeous beautiful, cat. Beautiful he's a beautiful kitty. cat. I'm not gonna say that he isn't. But you I'm, already did. But I am gonna say that that, that, that 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 Pixel is uh, got some. Got, you know, he's got some looks. So know? that's a rope too. No, that's a tentacle. That's that, gonna like, kill you. No, dead. no, no. That's a rope. Uh, no, no, we're it's swimming. It's like a block. You're underwater. Swim. This game's crazy. This game, every level this developer is, is really cool. We played some games by him, and every level's different. He's like, very, very good. So different. There's a bonus on this one. Yes. 
It's an extra life, which is hard to get, and I can't remember. Oh, you have to go to the right hand side, then go yeah, you back have to, to first. The left? Yeah, you go to the right and then mm. to the left. That's how you do it. So you you gotta you gotta get up to the end anyway. So right now you just made it twice as hard. I did. I have to be it's down. Okay. I would get down personally, yeah. and yeah. then yeah, jump up. Because then the the, the ah. Oh, ah. Then they go away. That's right. And then and now yeah, you that's jump right. up to the. And yeah, that's right. Up there. You got this. Yeah, that's right. There we go. And I needed that. It gives you all the health back. The cool thing about this game is they have incremental there is, like recovery, so you can actually screw up um, a little a fair bit. amount. Yeah. And now you got a sword. This yeah, is the frogger really, level. I, I mean, I, obviously, I'm terrible at it, but I. Uh, oh, me too, man. Oh, well, remember I you this turned like, the volume down because we were having fun and you <laughs> wanted to get all serious. <laughs> you were talking to developers. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're ready to crush. Fancy. That Makes seems sure. like that would make the game harder, not easier. Uh, it's like when you get a thing, now you have, now to, use you the have thing. to like use the thing. Because <laughs> we've, we've just crossed a threshold, friends. It is three hours into the stream. Yes. So that means we're past the first quarter. Oh my god. Past the first quarter. That's right. Yeah, that's good. And um, the, and, and that, is, that is the main threshold. And it's also a threshold for us because it's not... We typically stop the show around this time. That's true. So this we is are normal in, length. We're in uncharted territory now. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, it's going to get weird. It's going to get strange. I feel it already. I was... I was I was trying to invite myself music? to dance. Really to... <laughs> well, you silenced us in all of the ways possible before, so... That's okay. Yeah. There we go. Now we have some music. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. You can always uh, donate directly. directly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. you won't be able to oh, reach. Oh, no, how will I donate if the GoFundMe goes <laughs> that's down? That's right. That's right. You can donate after. <laughs> yeah. go oh god this level oh, yeah is... this is just a rippy level man yeah it's random death oh did you see that right at the end it hit me doesn't matter though you it got hit him right health. at the end <laughs> oh, i got all my stuff back <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah you gotta push uh -oh. this guy off yeah. yeah oh yeah you just hold it down there you go i got hit like three times yeah it's a rough oh. one yeah because now we're sort of we're sort of looping back but not really yeah Oh, you lose, James. I think that's where I... Skull. You're not you dead. You lose. Yeah, we got past this point, but not that much <laughs> no, further. No, much further than that. We're, we're, we're... Again, we're hitting a threshold. The threshold crossing. I'll have to feed the cats in a second after I die once more. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean... I guess it's 4.30 you feed them. Four. Four or five. <laughs> oh, my God. Just me out in my ear. Yeah, dude. <laughs> He's like, hey, you know, know I do exist, and I'm a cat, and I can't open cans. <laughs> okay. Obviously. Cat. Or there would be much rejoicing. There would be no cat food. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to feed them? I can do it. Oh, yes, please. That would be excellent. Thank you. It's just, uh, do you want wet or dry? It's uh, oh, wet. Him. Right He's now. the best yeah. one. Hey, dude, come up. Oof, I almost died there. Ah! Oh, like or is it away. just uh, deadly kelp? Uh, it could be a sea monster as well that's got its yeah, tentacles up there, but it's moving, but it could be the, the waves moving. Mm -hmm. I would I would go for monster because you know kelp doesn't kill you too easily. Yeah, for people playing this game, there's a oh oh because I have full life. I don't so need what, life. So what is that? Uh, points. <laughs> points. Yeah. Which is fine, you know. Whoa, that's close. There we go. You have to stab this guy. Yep. Just get in close and stick the sword into his face. Yes, yeah, it's actually, you can hold it out and just oh. stab him. Stab him! Oh my god. Okay, it's all good. Ah, whoa. Oh, that was good to uh, recover. Barely. There we go. But it is nice that you can just hold out your sword. And 
dab him in the face. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's easier going up here. Because I'm just falling down and stabbing. Stab. Oh, this level. Yay. Oh, my second coin. Those are precious. They're probably worth a lot in the scheme of things. Yeah, it makes sense that it would be. If like that the uh, that the goal of the game is to not lose lives so that you can get yeah. bonus points. I haven't lost one yet. Hello, Andrew Davy, dropping by for a quick hello. 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 He is uh, the developer of Boulder Dash, which uh, uh. we will be playing. I'll wait till um, I'll wait till. Um, you don't want to have to explain Alan. it twice. No, I don't want to explain it twice. Because it's very exciting development. Ah! Oh my god. Okay, I don't think I've passed this level. Because it's deadly. There we go. Oh god. You die. Die. Okay. 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 Oh, I had trouble before with this. Oh my god! I have to kill, like, multiple guys of that. Do I? Now what? Oh, you lose! Uh, okay, I have to kill a lot of bats then before I can pass through, I guess. And maybe. I've never passed that level. I think I've made it to there before. I need food. food. That's not food. No, I know. <laughs> but we eat. Uh, <laughs> but we eat it anyway. Like six? Oh! Arena fight! Welcome, Marina Fuddy. He is in the line of the tornado or hurricane. Oh. What is it called? It's called Barry. It starts with a B. I was like, B? Wow. Not too many of them then. Because they go, or it's looped around. But I haven't heard any of the news that there's lots of hurricanes this year. That's because it's no longer is it news. Bob. Yeah, maybe it isn't. Hey, pass me your water, I'll fill you up. Oh, thank you. When you're safe. I, I need to do mine, I have to put salt. I did very well. Oh, really? Yeah. This okay. is salt water. So why are you drinking salt water? It's electrolytes. It's salt and potassium. That sounds good. It's what plants crave. <laughs> That's right, man. <laughs> <laughs> Humans do. Ah! It's gonna come for me. What is the name of the, uh, oh my god, uh, the uh, storm that's heading your way? It has a B. Starts with a B. Hurricane Barry. Barry, that's it. Like the TV show, which is quite funny. There's a TV show called Barry? Oh, there yes, is. that's right. It's really good. I have to watch that. Oh my oh, god. Am you I gotta watch die? that like you gotta watch those tentacles. I know. Barry was brought up. Oh. You lose. F. I can't even bring myself to get excited about it anymore. Because <laughs> I lost. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> it's, it, this is a pretty cool game, Andrew Davy. It's an incredible game. Uh, it is. It's really good. I like that each it's level is. One of the best platformers I've played. Is quite different. Like, like each level is very different. different. Yeah. Like the mechanics of each level is different. Yeah. It's not a, oh, you learned how to push a boulder on someone, and now you're going to be pushing boulders. <laughs> All day, every day, a hundred times. Like, no, you push times. the boulder once, and you'll probably push it again, but, <laughs> but we oh, haven't, but time. if so, later. Yes. And he's got a helicopter game that uh, he made as well that's very much like this, but I think we only played it once, and we need to... Revisited at a point. What is it called? Also, I got some cliff bars. I don't know if you guys want them. I'm, I got them for myself. Poison. But, but if you guys are in, <laughs> that's that's gonna be my saving grace for this marathon. Well, we're gonna be getting pizza. Oh, I'm sure. But, when Tanya gets here. But this will be better. But for in me. the meantime. Because also pizzas, I find pizza rough these days because oh, like yeah. it's just carbs and cheese, which I I love pizza. Don't get me wrong, but I'm. Cliff bar is going to save my butt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. 
Oh, I'm sure there's cars. Ah, but there's, but there's other things other than just... <laughs> 44 grams of carbs. Oh, no. That's pretty good, isn't it? That's more than twice as many carbs as I eat in a day. Really? <laughs> How many carbs is in pizza? That's the real question. A billion. So many oh that God. they don't even put it on <laughs> they the They don't label. even bother. They're like, They're like it has all scary. of the carbs. Somebody who's looking for carbs is like, just don't eat pizza then. Just... I can see what that heart it's is. It's like someone being like, so the is first this chicken breast vegan? <laughs> the first yeah, right. ingredient is brown rice syrup, which is which is good in that it means that the first ingredient is not sugar, but it's still... Oh, but then cane syrup is quite close down the roll anyways. So when your first ingredient, it means that the single ingredient here that is the most is pure glucose, is essentially pure glucose. Whoa. So what you're saying is that I'm really deluding myself. You're you're yeah. you're deluding yourself. Like oh the, first, the first, the first, never been here. Second, oh my and god, that fourth, was a mistake. How do I do this? I have to kill fifth. him. Yeah, sort it up. That's how I do it. Yeah, it's actually not too hard. It's really, it's basically just carbs. I'm just eating. I'm just. I just may as well just eat a Hershey's bar. Uh, I mean, this oh, doesn't have as much fructose in it, and that is it. Uh, glucose is oh, better sticky. than fructose, but it's still carbs. Hey, you made it past the Holy thing. fuck! I did. Is this this is the end, maybe, or it's this the big, the, the final battle, which I I do have four lives. Yep. Oh, I think I've been here before. I haven't. Ah. <clears throat> Ah! Oh, oh no! Uh -oh. Ow! Oh, it's okay, James. Damn it! We got there once, we can get back. If I, you I can't time. get back there again, then there's no point in even practicing this game. Like, I okay. can. Oh, James. It's for the best that you died. There. This is our like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. I think that's the end of the game, though. That has to be. The end of the game? Yeah. For really? sure. Huh. For sure. Why are there so many extra zeros? <laughs> if that's the end of the Maybe game. Maybe it loops around. Mm. It makes sense. Maybe it gets harder. I suppose just got your back, man. He says, good game, almost won. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So he knows? Is that the end? I take it back. It wasn't best for you to die there then. If that and was Nick the News end. says, was pizza day at work today? That's Friday's a great day Damn for pizza. Damn it! And the helicopter game is called Peril. Ah, that's the name of it, yes. Great game. I, we haven't played that much. I really need to do that again. Play. Hey, shush. It's audio. It comes through very noisily. I'm scum software. I'm so happy that you're like hanging out and for the 12-hour marathon. And yeah, and maybe. And, and please, I'd love to see you keep making games. It delights me to no end. Yeah. Because we were like, okay, this is never gonna happen. This, uh, you know, <laughs> this guy that hasn't this, been around you know, for a this, long time. This bird person game. You know, I was like, oh, he's just not going to be on. And I'm so stoked that you're here, man. And your game was so cool. Yep. I just found it too hard for the hard beginning. Hard as hell. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a hard game, but I would love it if, like, I, I said it already in the stream, but I'll say it again, that, like, it would have been dope if, um, the, at least the <gasps> first level, you didn't die from hitting the walls. <laughs> and then maybe, like, in the second or third one, you do. You know, just so you can get a handle on it and feel like you're not such a failure. <laughs> It's like it was like jumping into quantum physics and like I haven't I'm like barely like I don't even know my like you know ABCs. Yeah, it was pretty. It was <laughs> pretty one, intense, threes. man. It was great. Multiplication tables. Really, you're working. Oh, you work. He said he's working on the stream right now. Oh, nice. I love that. I love when we can bring games back from the dead or developers mm. back from the dead, and and bring these games back and and. Give them to new life, well, because some really good games out there. You know, in art, they always say, I mean, the meaning of a piece of art happens when you um, share it with an audience. That totally makes sense. And I think that's also uh, partly what our goal is with the show: is to share, um, have an opportunity on, for get you to experience like what it's like to have an audience for your games. Yeah, it is a it's it's a unique thing that doesn't happen all the time like it's, sometimes these games feel like they're being ugh, made in isolation well, yeah. and it's like oh this sucks right does anybody even care about my game okay we're at the end again with all our lives mm. we're gonna rock it 
I realize I could, I could sit. No. Yeah. Oh. Got hurt instantly. And he says it should dig, um, um, uh, dig out the last build of the game. It was more polished before the overhaul we played. Damn it! Ah! Um, oh my explain gosh. to me this, this Still salt time to get there again. I'm on keto. Yeah? And you have to... You have to take, uh... Um... Electrolytes. Um... Especially... You know, what exactly are lines. electrolytes? Just salt, potassium, and magnesium. Interesting. And you use... I think it's salt and potassium you use... Back and forth. One. I can't remember what it is, but like the two of them play off the, the other, and so. Um, you, and you need both. It's easier to get sodium, mm -hmm. but you need potassium as well. And, and, so you're, and the reason oh, that you need oh my it when God. You're on keto is that um, carbs. When you have lots of carbs, you basically like retain lots and lots of water. No carbs. But I used to always get cramps. I, you don't have to do it forever. Do you feel like you are, have gotten less cramps now that you've switched over to this uh, the diet? It's really hard to say because I used to have tons. And by f definitely the worst cramps that I've had were like pre. Like so, mm. like such strong cramps in my calves that like I would... This, it almost always happened when I was sleeping. Mm -hmm. And I'd get up, and I would try to use my oh, body weight to like that. push my foot down, but was unable to. Mm -hmm. I was like doing a, you know, like a tippy toe on ah. my foot. Ah, <laughs> was right next to him. <laughs> Which is just uh, but wild, because man. before I, I was obviously, I obviously needed them before mm -hmm. and didn't get them. Although most people probably don't. Definitely. <laughs> oh. I okay, definitely, I'm out of time. Uh, we have a bunch of people who have, uh, who are bailing, which is totally cool. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't call it bailing when you've been don't here for bail. four hours. Well, Arena Foot has to get ready for the storm. <laughs> oh yeah, because it's a hurricane warning. Mm. Or it's just or, one person leaving. Mick Muse said later too. Arena, Arena Foot. and then Dan ABC says, uh, "Okay, gang, I'm gonna go. We'll check out on, okay. uh, later." But don't go yet because Dan Kitchen is up next. Mm. Um, Dude, we're so close to beating this. I know. Okay. I'm, out of I'm out of time. I uh, know we gotta we gotta keep going. Um, yeah. So we're gonna switch over to Deep Stone Catacomb before that, so you can oh, play it and practice it. M K Smith. Press button. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for still being here. Oh, you got it. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, what is it? Deep. Where is it? Deep Stone Catacomb. Oh, there it is. Um, Should I jump in or just wait? Um, let's jump in and you can play it while we're on the um, on the chat. I'm gonna turn down the volume, obviously. And what were the different levels? I'm gonna go with I one. Remember? I feel like I played this before. Me. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we played. Who played this with? I think you did. Seems like an airline game. <laughs> or maybe I. Oh, yeah. Shit, that that is. scorpion! That scorpion has two colors on it, oh, yeah. which is. Uh, I think that's an uh, indication that it is dangerous. Yeah, this is like the sword you can get. I remember this. Oh, which way? Not that way. Just more scorpions. I remember this game. So, you can run. let's check out how the eBay items are doing. For the fundraiser, let's do a refresh here. Oh, astronomer! It's fifty-one dollars Canadian. Wow. Um, that's the signed one. Uh, last number, forty out of forty. Can't buy that anymore. Uh, the box, boxed version and limited version. Halo twenty-six hundred is seventy-three dollars. Gold Rush, which is Dan Kitchen's game, who we're going to be talking to next, hundred and seven dollars. <laughs> Wow, signed complete box. Galaga, complete box up to $315. Uh, 
Stay Frosty 2, $73. Medieval Mayhem has finally jumped up from the dollar. <laughs> it's up to $36. Very good. Um, that's the rare clear shell cart. So keep that low because I do want that. So nobody bid on that. <laughs> hey. No, no, no. Bid it right up. Bid it right up. Uh, Stella's Stocking, uh, $34. That's the limited edition cart number 153. Retron seventy seven three fifty five three hundred fifty five dollars draconian forty seven dollars space rocks fifty one homebrew companion volume one and two thirty one dollars and space rocks poster is now up to twenty so I don't know what this adds up to because it doesn't seem to it used to add it up maybe that's just on the computer version but we're in the we're in the like almost thousand dollar range really for raising money how much did they have initially. Oh, they were all 99 cents. Oh, I started God. them out on, of course. Oh, I should, sorry, I mean, um, uh, how much money has been, was, was put towards Stella before this? Oh, I have no idea. Okay. Yeah, they, that, don't, they don't add that uh, up. Yeah, nor would we, we <laughs> should we know. No. no. Obviously. <laughs> hey, how much money did uh, you make last year? Uh, yeah. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Show me your taxes, please. Come on, tax return. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I should, uh, oh, no. Okay. Yeah. Oh, God. And let me change the ah, interview Scorpion. name so it's correct. Oh, what's that? Chicken leg. Yeah, it's like um, it's it's like Castlevania. Okay. And legend has it there is a sword bestowed upon its holder. Oh, it gives this, them great powers. Yes, a great sword. And level five. Correct. Yeah. To vanquish the enemy. So we'll be with Dan Kitchen in yeah, about that. two minutes here. Fuck that. So hold tight. See that like thing just is like a homing missile that just comes at you. And you can't kill it. Yeah. So I just leave the room until I can. Oh, Stephen answered your question. Whoa. It was less than a thousand last year for donations. Amazing. Okay, that's great news then. That, that gives we're us really a sense increasing of, it. So hopefully yeah. that means we were able to make a difference, which is really a good feeling. Yeah. Hopefully we can go even farther. I want to destroy that number. <laughs> Exactly, well, that's what you want to do. Okay. We call these, uh, 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 what do you call them in Star Wars? Oh, Jawas? These are Jawas. Uh -huh. These are the same people. Jawas. These Jawas, yeah. These are the yeah. same people. Oh, extra life. Yeah. Make your full lives. Yeah, that's actually an extra, yeah. I got four lives, for sure. <laughs> Can you imagine this game in real life, Andrew Davey says? You go into a room, the guy sees you, or is too close to you, Runs out, runs back in again, and the guy's in a different spot and doesn't know you're there. It's like st it's like a Tom Clancy so like funny. Splinter Cell. It's like, oh, that He's guy so who just murdered my friend. Uh, I'll just continue my watch. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, learn those RPGs, those fantasy ones where somebody gets a, an arrow through the head, and they're like, what was that? <laughs> oh well. Oh, doing my rounds. We'll just keep going. <laughs> or their friends, yeah, friends dead on the ground. Like, oh, did you hear a noise? Oh well. It's like must. M must, must have been the wind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what the saying is. <laughs> must have been the wind. That's why with those stealth games, I crank them up to like the hardest difficulty. As they I, should be. Because I like, I want to be like murdered instantly <laughs> when when I get found. Because it's like I want okay. immersion. Say, so, we're gonna get on the, uh, we're gonna get on with Dan here. Give him a call. <laughs> Jawas aren't worth much. Uh, maybe they're worth points. I don't know. They seem to not drop things. Dan! Hey, how are you, James? James? Doing really well. So thank you so much for uh, joining us today on the stream. No worries. I love the, uh, love the show so far. Excellent. And, and also, thank you very much for donating a copy of your upcoming game, Gold Rush, which is people are very excited about. My pleasure. So, I know you are... You're, you're a programmer from way back in the day uh, and worked with Activision in the 80s, which is incredible um, because they were, they were, they are known as like the, the company that put out the best games for the Atari 2600. Um, and some of your games I actually played in the 80s, <laughs> which is crazy um, as a kid. 
uh, crack pots. I, I played that a whole bunch. My friend had crack pots, and it was such fun. He also uh, made Ghostbusters, Kung Fu Master, F-14, Tomcat, Crossbow, River Raid 2, Double Dragon, and Akari Warriors is uh, your resume for uh, the 2600. And now you're back making a new game. Uh, Gold Rush, and uh, also another one, Bon Voyage, after that. Yes, yep, uh, Gold Rush, I think everyone has seen the video uh, of the train cars. Um, it's coming along quite well. I've got all the objects and enemies now coded, and uh, just doing some cleaning up of the code, and going to be focusing on audio soon, uh, and then start laying out the many levels that will be comprised of all those different train cars. Oh, I see. Like, um, you've got all the elements, and now you're putting them in order. And I guess, would the would the earlier levels have less train cars? This is what I hypothesized, I think, on an earlier show. Like, the early levels would have a certain number, say five or seven train cars, and then, then it would get longer and longer as, as you progress through the levels. Correct. And, uh, and many of the cars you can actually cars. climb into. And there's... there's inside the cars um, or a bunch of the box cars the coach cars dining cars and you can you can get into them via these little hatches that are on top and also I think you mentioned once somewhere just like pitfall you can go from car to car while you're inside the cars as well as when you're on top correct it's got the same type of uh, two-level play that Dave put into pitfall um, and some of the cars actually are, there's a, a number of cars by, uh, by the great Radini that are being pulled by the, by the Gold Rush Gulch Railroad. And those are magic cars, and they actually do some pretty, pretty unique things besides just going from one car to another. They actually will add some other level of gameplay. Ah, so it won't be as straightforward as people think. It's not. It's going to go outside of the realism type of realm and get into some uh, some magic. Then it will. It'll, it'll get into a little bit of fantasy in some of the cars, uh, and the circus cars will have some animals that you'll have to deal with. And um, there's there's going to be quite a lot of things I'm putting in there to uh, to really spice up the gameplay. So so for people who maybe don't know the 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 history of how this how this game evolved and how it came about and maybe you can give a quick rundown of of the origins uh, of gold rush and um and now how it's come to this point oh sure um i started the, this game as keystone capers 2 um soon after i finished crackpots at, at activision uh gary had finished keystone capers a little bit ahead of me which did very well um, I had finished uh, 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 Crackpots, and he was on to his, his next title, um, which I think he was playing around with uh, Pressure Cooker. And uh, we started talking in the lab one day about, you know, Keystone's done so well, it'd be nice to do a sequel. And being a fan of trains, I've always tried to replicate some train cars on the Stella display. And I thought, that would be kind of cute to put Keystone Kelly up there. And so I created the prototype, put Keystone Kelly on board. And that was about October-ish, November. The video game crash was in full swing. Um, Vision pulled us off. The, the 2600 games put us on other, other games for some of the emerging platforms of the time. And uh, I made a ROM. I remember bringing it home back then and lost track of it. And I had uh, frequently visited the classic game, gaming convention, the E3s, the CESs throughout the years, and would meet up with John Hardy and Joe and Sean over at the National Video Game Museum. They always had an exhibit there, uh, usually a very cool retro 1980s bedroom where they had an a, a Nintendo, I'm sorry, uh, Atari set up uh, and in television and I would always joke around and say, you know, I have this game which Keystone Capers 2 that I never finished and after about the 15th or 16th year of saying this, they kind of looked at me at one point and said, oh, we kind of think you're full of shit um, and then it, the joke was oh, Dan's got this game we're never going to see <clears throat> well, last year um, uh, uh, Carolyn, my, my lovely significant other whom you've met 
I were going through uh, my offsite storage and looking for some things. And lo and behold, I see a box back there and she starts rummaging through it. And I said, oh, one of these days I'm going to find that cartridge that, that, I found, that I had. And she started pulling out things and saying, is this it? Is this it? Nope. And she pulled out this little red case and said, is this it? And I said, oh, my God, that's Keystone Capers 2. And I was so excited. I got on the phone outside of the storage area with John Hardy, the, um, the curator of the National Video Game Museum. John happened to be in Long Island visiting his, uh, his mother at the time. And he said, well, you have this thing. I'm going to come over tomorrow, drive from Long Island to New Jersey, and see if it works. He did. I had a Stella unit set up. We plugged it in, and it lit right up. And, oh, my God, I was taken back. The funny thing was my brother Gary and I were talking about two or three months earlier about the resurgence of interest in the 2600 and homebrews. And he showed me uh, a uh, – it was a uh, an online uh, Stella tool. Um, and And – I started playing around with it. This is two or three months before I found the cartridge. And I said to Caroline, I said, you know, I, I had this cartridge of Keystone Capers 2 that I think I'll never find. I want to start recreating it for my memory. And I was about three months into playing with it, setting up the train cars, the background. And then she finds the cartridge. And lo and behold, it's amazing how close my memory was to the actual game. Um, I think, in fact, the newer version I was writing was better looking than the original. Uh, and so I found it. Uh, I donated it ultimately to John uh, and the folks at the National Video Game Museum. Uh, and I decided then to, to take the game and take the code I had started three months earlier, um, which had no affiliation with Activision. Um, I didn't want to use their code. It's, it's, I had no rights to do that. I'm concerned about their, their intellectual property rights. And I, I started to rewrite it. And uh, just before the retro, uh, the Portland Retro Gaming Expo last year, where you and I met, um, we were trying to think of a name and went through a bunch of things. And Carolyn said, well, you know, it's a gold, you have gold bars on the train and you're rushing around getting them. I have a gold rush because that's also an old Western term. And it really fit perfectly. And so the game will be released as Gold Rush, um, ultimately. And I will pay homage to Keystone Capers in some of the the uh, coach cars. We'll run into some of the Activision characters that we, we love very much. Tim Paul Harry will be visiting. Frostbite uh, visiting. Uh, Frostbite Bailey, I think it is. Um, and, uh, and Keystone Kelly may come west and visit his cousin, uh, Casey O'Kelly, uh, on the railroad. That's very, very exciting. Um, so, so it was cutting out a bit there. So you said it's going to be released in uh, October? I, I, I'm actually, yes, hoping to get it released in October. I For the Portland Retro Gaming Expo and, and well, line all that up? It's going to be the first playable will be on zero page, as we talked about. Dude, thank you. Thank you so much. That's excellent. I, I want can't to try to get into the game and try to, try to get the high score, the first high score. Yeah, I, I joked. I joked when we played Galaga on the stream that I have the world record in Galaga for sure. twenty six hundred. When I for now, for just the for now, yeah. very good. Yes, it's always good to have that first world record, uh, and and I'm hoping the first manufactured cartridge will be the one that I saw, and which is is uh, given to 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 the lucky winner of the eBay uh, auction. auction. Yes, of course. That's very exciting. That. Um, that we have a copy, future copy, <laughs> of, of Gold Rush, a promised copy of Gold Rush, um, up for auction to support Stella. And um, and you were you were mentioning Stella um, uh, in your story. And are you are you uh, using that right now uh, for your development of? Uh Absolutely. Uh, I started using Stella just last year, and I was amazed at the amount of detail they put into it to replicate even the slightest technical nuance that we used to deal with on the 2600 in the old days. Um, 
you know, back when we started, when I started Activision, Bob Whitehead had taken uh, two or three boards, put them in a little blue box, and had written his own monitor so that it could communicate with our PDP-11 where we did, we did our software, uh, which was the size of a room with an air conditioning unit. Um, and we joked that it was so slow you could hit um, assemble and go out to lunch and then come back and it may be done with your with your 4k assembly oh brutal oh my god <laughs> but we would so this is like this is like night and day now that you can uh night and day. program it and and look at it and do breakpoints and analyze what's going on in ram and and completely visualize it as like in real time correct and uh what we had was a stella unit that was modified sitting on top of the blue box and it ran off of two or four K of RAM inside the box. Um, and so every time we developed uh, and we made changes, obviously we'd have to assemble. We'd have to download it into the blue box, which we connected, I believe it was a VT100 uh, airline terminal at the time to communicate with the blue box. And we could do very basic things. Bob wrote a great monitor, uh, single step breakpoints. Um, we also had a logic analyzer that we could pull over on a cart and uh, put on top of the 6502. And that, that had a little display on it. So we could actually see what everything, what happened was uh, what was happening on all the address lines, data lines. Um, if we had a real bugger, a real bug of a bugger that to solve. But uh, Stella is amazing how it has revolutionized development. It's wonderful. There are even little tricks that I did with timing on the 2600 back in the 80s that for fun, I wanted to see if they captured it. They replicated the TIA and the timing so well that it's like with an actual unit. Yeah, it's, it is really amazing the minutia that they've gotten down to um, um, for in, in Stella. Can you stay in an empty room and stop pressing the button? Because it's actually cutting him out. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so. Yeah, it, it is un it, unbelievable um, how much work over the decades. Of course, they've had decades to work on it. But, um, yeah, the developers working hand-in-hand -hand with the Stella team to replicate every, like, even bugs and things that weren't supposed to happen. Because some people exploit those those things, those uh, illegal opcodes and things like that to make to make games work differently. Right, yes, the timing specifically uh, is, is to, the, to, to the cycle, which is uh, wonderful. I mean, we had, back in the old days, some of the Stellas weren't exactly perfect. They were all pretty good, but we had an instance where we had a few of the older units that weren't exactly running the software. If we were pushing the, the, um, uh, pushing the cycles to the max and doing some loads and stores at, really delicate places. Um, for instance, I do in, in Gold Rush, I have eight tire, eight wheels on the bottom of the train. And those are done literally by, by hammering the, the reset player across the screen to continually position players that are new. And the timing is just right, so they fit perfectly with the play field above it, which acts as the trucks. If anyone knows what a truck is on a, on a box car, it's the little metal that keeps the two two uh, wheels together and connect to the bottom of the box car. Uh, and that timing works really well on Stella and it's worked well on every uh, every unit that I've burned a ROM and tried it on. Um, it does not work well on the um, At Games Portable 2600. I don't, I don't think I'm running Stella or the latest version. No, and that's a lot of people have made patches for old games so that they work on the those those at games consoles. I, I definitely would not compromise anything in a game to make it work on that system. Agreed. If Agreed. it if if you can make it without changing something, like oh, there's a little code that you can change, but the, I would definitely do that. But I would not compromise anything in a in a game to to just cater to that very small you know, niche audience, and unless it was going to be packaged with it or some some sort of deal that you've made with at games, because, um, I mean, the Retron 77 was put out with a number of homebrew games included on it, so, of course, it had to work with uh, the old version 
of Stella that's included on it. So that, that would be the only reason I could think that you would want to make sure it runs on an old Stella. Um, and we have some uh, questions from the crowd, yeah. which please, yeah. if anybody has questions for Dan Kitchen, please go ahead. Um, uh, RJ Edwards 70 says, can you tell us a bit more about the three patches that we'll, ab we'll be able to earn on uh, Gold Rush? So maybe what what kind of achievements? Are they score achievements? Are they level achievements? Uh, they'll be score. Um, and it's, um, it's, it's three levels. The, uh, the first will be conductor. Uh, I haven't yet worked out the score plateaus. That will do with playtesting, which I would be flattered if you and Arlen would help the playtesting of that. Uh, oh, we would I'll love do in a heartbeat. To oh, yes. I, just I would looked. love that. Yeah, we'll, now, we'll definitely this, put it through. Yeah, that'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. Um, and then we'll have engineer, or actually, it'll be conductor, uh, it, it'll be baggage man, and it'll be engineer. Yeah, yeah that, that totally makes sense. A graduated uh, level. Tanya's out in the hallway. She's, I am. <laughs> she's scared to come in. You should come in so we can see you. I, I, I'm going to have to kneel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. You'll come and make a bit that? of room I here. don't even know where the... There it is. Oh, I, we're using that camera. <laughs> So, um, let's see, what other questions? And can you give some comments on how you feel about the new capabilities brought about by coprocessors on the cart, such as ARM chips? Does it still feel like an Atari, for example, when you look at a sophisticated new game like Galaga? That's from Andrew Davey. And I know you are, are, are focusing on this, on your two new games, keeping it to the uh, no coprocessors keeping it to something that could have been made in the 80s and 90s with the original run of the Atari. Yes, um, I am. I'm, I'm keeping it purely 6502. Um, Gold Rush will be 32K, uh, eight banks of, of 4096. And I, uh, I'm a purist in that way, but I'm all for the sophistication and the new technology. I mean, we had it back then when Dave designed his DPC uh, chip, which... Uh, some believe stands for display processor chip, but I know it actually stood for David Patrick Crane. Um, of course, uh, too much of a coincidence. That Dave, Dave is just a god when it comes to the system and to engineering in, in, in everything he does. So even back then we were trying to find other hardware to push the limits. So I think what we've done is incredible. Uh, what John has done, I'm stupefied by. The, the work he has done on Galaga I didn't think was possible. Um, Mappy itself is amazing. Scramble was amazing. But Galica is, I mean, it is a arcade machine jammed into a 2600. Uh, it is incredible, and I'm all for people using that technology because it'll just make the games better and better. Um, I'm just uh, going back to the purist because that's where I came from. And I always enjoyed the, the restrictions given to me by the 2600. That made... The machine the most fun of any machine i wrote code on and and sometimes having these restrictions um challenges yourself to get the best out of of what is given to you and sometimes results in something even better than maybe if you're given a multitude of tools to go here here's a bunch of things um and, and maybe it, it brings out the best in you by, by giving a bit of a challenge. Agreed. Uh, I know that back in the day we used to, uh, um, we, here, let me turn this light off and make things better. There we go. Back in the day we would, we would often write games for consumers, but also for other designers. Uh, many times we wrote games um, just to show off what we could do. And I remember a lot of CESs, we would have some of the other designers walk over and we'd go over to Bob and look at his screen and say, uh, Bob, how the hell did you do that? And then we'd have to figure out how it was done. Um, some of the competitors did that as well. I remember one CES where um, my friend Ed Salvo from Games by Apollo uh, came over at one point and I think it was, uh, it was the V-Delay, V-Del registers, which I think are 2A or 2B, something like that. And he came over and said, hey, this is really nice. How do you guys do this? And I said, well, I can't tell you, Ed. You're a competitor. He said, yeah, but can you just tell me what this register does? 
<laughs> and I can't tell you. Um, but we, we did things like that in a way like John is doing for others in the, in, in the arena of, of developers to look at and say, wow, how the hell did you do that? And I actually asked him online about something he did in Gallica. And when he explained it to me, I was like, yeah, I get that. But incredible what a talented chap like he can do with extra hardware. And probably I'd love to see what he would do without the hardware. He'd probably de design rings around us. Um, and it's just, uh, I think the hardware is great. I think it, it makes the machine that's 40 years old last longer and longer. Well, if you want a really good example of, of uh, John Champeau's work without the, the chip, you can take a look at Ladybug, which is a, yes. an incredible, yes. incredible port for the Atari that it, 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 it always deserved. And, and he just wanted to see it on the Atari. So he's, he's a skilled programmer no matter what tools you put no. in, in no. front of him. He's a man. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, he's, he's definitely got what it takes. And we would love to have had him 40 years ago. Um, Andrew Davies has a follow-up question. Um, he says, you're all for it, but can you see yourself using it in the future in a game? And have you ever programmed in C? I have programmed in C. Um, and I, I, I may, may do that. Um, once again, I just, you know, my, in my career, Activision was a magical time. Uh, we were at the forefront of making video games. Gary and I had actually had our own company previous to that, where we did a number of Apple games that we, we did through various publishers and really wanted to join Activision, looked up to those guys. Um, in every game back then, they had the little catalog. And in the back of the catalog, they had the four pictures of the guys, uh, Bob Whitehead, Al Miller, Larry Kaplan, and Dave Crane. And at one point in our little lab office in, in his basement, we drew our own pictures, myself, Gary, a guy, Kevin, who was working with us, and a guy, John. And we stuck them over that on the catalog. We pinned it up on the wall and said, we're going to be those guys one day. And eventually, we were blessed enough to actually be hired by Activision, open their Eastern Design Center. And it was a very magical time for, for all of us. And the challenge of working on that machine was so much fun that I, I actually get to relive those days as I write code now. Um, so I would probably prefer not to use C and not to use some of the extra, but you know, who knows? It's I'm finishing Gold Rush, uh, Bon Voyage. I've got a, a very nice screen up for it. And um, uh, I'm, I'm working on that. Who knows? Maybe the third game after that, I think I may, I may look at some of the pro co-processors that are floating around. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, it does make the card a little more expensive and, and to make the carts very affordable uh, to everyone who wants to buy one. Um, so that's another consideration. It's no longer as easy as it was then to manufacture. As you know, Al has helped everyone on that regard. In a lot of cases, people are taking old DPC chips and soldering them out of the old boards to use them. Um, it's much easier if you're, only, if you're ROM only. Uh, in my case, there, I'm working with someone to design a new board, and I've got a new uh, uh, a house in China who's making the new cartridge cases, and so we, we are kind of going from scratch that way. Uh, it may be harder once we add extra hardware involved. Yeah, uh, Andrew Davies says, I was also a 1980s programmer. I look back on those days with great fondness and feel very fortunate, too. But if I look at the details of the work back then, it was incredibly long hours and stressful. I wouldn't do it again, but it's the people I remember, still good friends with many. Dan, was it stressful for you too? And would you do would you do that sort of work today? Well, you are making games again today, so you know, is, is it you stressful? Know, you're, you're kind of taking more laid back. I am. Um, I have continued to stay in the video game business since uh, Activision. Um, when, I, when we left Activision, Gary and I formed a company called Imagineering, which ultimately became Absolute Entertainment, where we did uh, we took the company public. We were in business for nine years. We did a lot of games back then for the Super Nintendo, Nintendo Genesis. Um, and yes, we worked the long hours then in the 80s. 
I mean, I can remember never having a summer because I was always getting code ready to be manufactured for Christmas. Um, uh, we often would have the two or three day stints of staying up, writing code. Um, after Absolute, I had a small development company for five years where I did PC CD-ROM games. I did the same thing. Uh, and then I was fortunate enough to be hired by a company called Majesco that was based in New Jersey. And I helped launch them from a remanufacturer of Super Nintendo games to a full-fledged publisher and did the bulk of my work there. I think I produced there or either designed, produced, or wrote around 110 Game Boy games across color, black and white, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy DS, um, and helped them with a number of console titles that people may know, Blood Rain, uh, Advent Rising. I worked with Tim Schafer on Psychonauts, um, did, uh, did Jaws uh, for, for Universal, did a lot of film company products, um, uh, Ghost Rider and, and Eon Flux and products like that. And we st and, and for the people who don't know, also you worked on Desert Bus, which is Penn and Teller's game. Yeah, <laughs> which, is, which is the craziest game ever. Um, that where you're that, dr you're driving a bus from where is it? L. A. to uh, it's from Tucson, Arizona to Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, yeah, and it's and it's just a straight road, but the steering's just a little bit wonky on the bus, so you have to pay attention and keep steering it a little bit off and it's like is it a six hour drive there it, and a six it, hour drive back and there's like one bug that hits the windshield yeah. and you have wipers <laughs> and and it's used for events like this for raising money and people play it for for they drive there you get one point and then you drive back and you get one more point it's it's absolutely brilliant and and, and i i love the I, and i believe uh uh, one of uh, Brian did a version for the 2600. Um, yes, uh, I don't know his screen name. I apologize. Um, but to, to finish with Andrew, yes, I, I still I, I do contract work now. I have a company in India where we do artwork for video game and for online games. Uh, I am diving into the 2600, and sometimes even with my contractual real job work of owning the studio and helping run it, we do have the crunch time. So um, I really haven't stopped doing that, but I can tell you as I get older, it's not as much fun and it is harder to, uh, to stay up two or three days. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, can uh, I, I have friends who's young, young chaps who say, well, you know, what's the game business? It must be great. It is great, but you will put in some long, hard hours. And I know that's a very big issue now with the crunch time uh, and the talk around the GDC for years of unionize and, and whatnot. And I, I, am, I am certain that a lot of these companies really burn their, their talent out and don't take care of them. Uh, one thing I always did is the, the value of my company walked in and out every day. Other than that, it was equipment. And we took care of the people who worked for us and the artists and the programmers and the producers, because they are the heartbeat and the blood of your company. And if you and that's and that's why Activision was initially set up is, is because was set up. Atari. Yep. Atari yep. didn't uh, value its employees, its programmers more. I think the quote was more than the person who put the game in the box. That's correct. And we actually, when we met with them in 1982, we were at the Consumer Electronics Show. Gary had just shipped Space Jockey after back engineering the 2600 at a firm that he and I worked at. And we met with Activision. We met with Atari at that show, and, and they wanted to fly us out to uh, potentially be hired. And I remember we came back to New Jersey, and a week or so later, we, we were wined and dined in first class and went to Atari for a big interview and came back to New Jersey. And the next week, wined and dined in first class and went to Activision. And Atari, I literally had a VP of product development look at us and say, you know, I can get towel designers to do the kind of work you guys do. You just tell. That was a, that's a real quote. You could just tell that they didn't care about the talent or the people. They just wanted you to make a product that they could sell, and they weren't concerned about your ability to be creative. 
Wow. Jimmy that's, West. that's terrible. That's terrible. It was. And so I can, I can totally see why, um, those, the, the first initial people, uh, left, uh, Atari and, and formed Activision and, um, and went on to a huge success. Oh yeah. Cause Bob, you, yeah. Bob, if you don't Bob. treat them right, they're going to walk out the door and take their time. Bob and Dave and Al and, and Larry just couldn't do it anymore and just wanted to go off. And they ended up meeting a wonderful man, Jim Levy, who was a businessman who could raise capital. And with them, uh, Jim was went on a road show and raised capital and, and started Activision in a, in a little office in Santa Clara and the rest is history. Well, I, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. And, and I want to thank you so much for uh, donating your game Gold Rush to um, the Stellathon to help raise money to continue on with this great tool and emulator that we have that we can all enjoy for free and it's open source everybody can contribute to it so and we're um, honored to get to play test it on the show that's insane yes. thank yeah, you so much so honored no to be the first I think, to play gold I think rush Shelly is amazing i think we wouldn't be where we are in the homebrew community without it we'd really be lost without a proper tool um we'd all be you know the harmony card is wonderful i'm i'm sad it doesn't work in my retron 77 um but it's a great device, and I love using it, plugging into real Stella units. But I think we we would all be lost without the Stella emulator. And it's just incredible how wonderful they've they've made it and how it's a, an asset for all of us. And I am personally uh, so excited to see the machine still going strong after 40 years and the interest in it. Um, I thought I may have been the only one who still had fun. <laughs> no, it's a great, great community, and I'm really happy to be. I was amazed to find out how wonderful people have have done, how many wonderful games people have done over the last, you know, ten years, twenty years. Um, incredible. I, I'm sad I wasn't a part of it then, but very happy to be on board now and and help uh, continue to make uh, great products. Yeah, definitely, and I'm I'm sure everybody out there is looking forward to your. Your return to the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. I promise, and, I'm not and, disappoint. I'm not disappoint. Oh, it, <laughs> uh, I know you won't. Like everybody's seen the screenshots already, and that amazing graphic of the train engine, which just blows me away. That huge train engine with the moving wheels and everything's bumping is just unbelievable. So I can't wait to to get uh, to get my hands on a joystick on it. Uh, that will be soon, and and uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll coordinate with you offline on that. Definitely. So thank you so much for joining us, Thanks. and uh, we will talk with you soon, Dan. Great. Definitely. Bye, Arlen. Bye, Tanya. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> so that, that was great. Yay. Oh, are we still talking? <laughs> yep. Okay. Now, I noticed that you're doing really well in this game. <laughs> yeah, I just, like, went, I just went past the second dragon. Second dragon. I don't think I killed the second dragon. No. Did I? I? No. No, you died no. on the last one. Did I? Did yeah. I make it? Oh, I made it all the way to last yeah, one. Yeah, so we'll you got it. We'll there we go. You got to make it. Well, I had a rhythm going, and now it's now gone. I know. I know. It's all good. He it's died. He died on you the got third four lives. So. Good. Yeah. So I don't want to interrupt this game. Go on to the next one. So I'll let you definitely finish because you're kicking ass. On well, this we'll one. see. I don't know how far. I I think if I had kept going, but it, I don't. I'm not gonna. It had to happen because Dan Kitchen interview is infinitely more important. Luckily, this game can kind of be. Ooh. Kind of be paused if you yeah. stay in a... But see, like, I had a... Yeah, I'll just have to get back on track. Yeah. This... yeah. <laughs> oh. I love the scorpions. I love them. Yeah, they're great they, they colors. They so good. Yeah, that's, that's what you good. needed. And the floating, the floating drums. So where <laughs> am I? I'm at, like, uh, 19. Wow. Oof. Rough. Rough room to walk yeah. into. Some of these rooms, you're just like, nope, punishment immediate. It's just rippy. Um, so, yeah, we always love talking with Dan and meeting up with him. And we met him in Hashtag uh, legend. New York. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definite <laughs> legend. And I'm so honored that he's he can uh, be on the show. Yeah. Somebody who made games for Activision in the 80s yeah. and now is making, again, games, homebrew games. For um, the same console, yeah. Yeah, for the same console. Oh, that's very loud. Turn the game down a bit. Hey. Um, we might have a fighting chance. <laughs> Um, so our next, um, the next person up is uh, Q&A via PDF. 
So we won't be phoning in her voice. It's going to be from uh, Stephen Anthony, who is the maintainer of Stella. So we can continue playing while we do the Q and A. <laughs> so we don't have to stop this. Cool. Oh no, it's all good. Oh. Hey, you're full. Absolutely full. This is what you want to be. We'll see, man. I don't know, I don't know what, what level I'm at it 20s. is. I think it's 22. I th or, or 24, 24. maybe. So I'm just, just like, like ready to just like... Oh, oh get, get. Mid boss. Ah, oh, get off him. Ah. Ah. Oh. There's only so much you can do, man. This I is know. not... That's okay. We'll be okay. Oh, this is... What if this is, is it? it? No, 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 it's not. 21. I think it's 24. I think you're right. Oh. Oof. It's Oof. just hell. Like, no matter what way we go. <laughs> it is, just... and it gets worse and worse and worse. Oh, God. Oh, 24, Mick Muse says. Oh, Mick Muse is the guy who Mick made Muse, this, man. Right? Thank you. Oh, I got some health. Okay, we have oh, a yeah. chance again? Oh, good. You got your projectile. Do not lose Well, I'll do that. my best, but <laughs> I mean, I mean, when... it's no matter what you do. Yeah. Yeah. The gonna... problem is, when you get to the dragon, he'll take that away from you so quick. Oh, hey, fighting chance. Now yeah. you're back. I've That's... been doing... RNG's been really good to me this game. Yeah. Like, I keep whenever I need stuff, it seems to be there. Now, this is interesting. Oh, yes. Um, for um, Gold we'll Rush, going. there, there is going to be a Kickstarter for it, so everybody will be able to get some pretty cool rewards. Um, uh, there's going to be Railroad Spike as part of one of the packages. Oh, really? Yeah, so that's a nice one. I'll be buying... It's like I, inst I, I get healed, but I just instantly die. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's tough. What are you on now? 2022. This isn't nope. too hard. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, these guys are fine. Well, I gotta. I'm. I'm actually clearing rooms just because, like, um, I need the thing, yeah. and I've also been finding too that like I end up having to backtrack, and yes. it's just infinitely better to Always. have like. Some you might stuff as well clear it. He mentioned um, uh, Tim Schafer, and he's my favorite game of all time is Diablo 2, and Matt and Tim Schafer were the developers on it. Oh, I believe wow. No, I think Tim Schafer was. Matt is his brother. He named the weapon after it, and that's an insane game. That was Blizzard. It's just really Diablo, cool. Diablo, yeah, very popular. It's just so cool to hear like a game that I, I probably have played. Didn't they shit the bed recently? Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> were they, we're gonna Blizzard make it is for done. Mobile. Blizzard's done. Everybody's like, yeah. what? Like, Blizzard is a terrible company at this point. Um... And most people are just jumping over to um, other things, especially in that right. genre. But like, it's but it's cool to know that he like he he worked with someone who has essentially programmed my favorite game, yeah. which is really cool. Definitely. I just like let's see. Oh. Ah, fuck. Never, never, that. never put up with that bar. You know. Oh, room. see it instantly, like lose it. Idiot. <laughs> Idiot. So tough. Yeah, some uh, rooms but we're deep. I shouldn't be though, because these are just. Yeah, the whole these level are... is just. Uh, no, I... don't put up with that. <laughs> <laughs> I never put up with that. The only way I do is if I'm locked in the room. Yeah, but you, you didn't mention it to me until I got into several levels that so you could just back out of the room oh, and that line would is, disappear. This is the game you're talking yes. about. I was trying to figure out why this... sometimes it seemed like you couldn't get out. Yeah. Now yeah. I remember you. Yeah, and this... sometimes the door closes behind you. This was the debate of the game I was debating about about cheating. What is cheating? Yes. And yeah. is going in and out of a room... Not if it sometimes yeah. locks. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And even yeah. if... Yeah. Especially yeah. if it sometimes that. locks. Yeah. Especially Jeez. if it sometimes yeah. locks. Yeah. But even if it doesn't, if it's part of the game... Yeah. Then I think then it's fair play. Yeah. It's totally it's fair. fair. Unless okay. there's a set of okay. rules. Although it's completely unfair when you're not told that I would definitely try and get so. that extra life. Oh yeah. So I would clear all the yeah, rooms. That's my answer. Three levels. And then you started backing out. Like like, just where are you backing out? Is, oh, but the they're like aggressive. Like, the line goes away. Like, look how fast <laughs> they are. Like, oh, you're almost dead. That's okay. Yeah. Oh, the hardest yeah, they part. They are very yeah. aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> like, see this guy? He's just like, and they're erratic yes. at this level. <laughs> I love them. They look so good, though. They're the AI really in this game, or, or supposed oh AI, is so like, good. Like, it's cool. a challenge. I'm so oh. stressed, guys. I'm so stressed. <laughs> <laughs> Stress level midnight. Uh, yeah. there we go. I'm gonna fucking die. Yeah. But it's better to do it here, and maybe get a health. But if this is a closed room, do you have to do it? Uh, yeah. If it's closed, it's not. But, um... No, no, I mean... 
Um, he wants to. He's I want him to get uh, heals. Oh, I see. I okay. Some, gotcha. I need something. To yeah. Like, I need some well, nourishment because I think the next one we're getting really close it, to the boss. What level is is the, the I'm, final I, boss? I think I'm at 22 yeah. right now. So and there's going to be a no, 24. The 24. Programmer just. Um, uh, Oh, well, he said he spent a lot of time working on the AI, which I totally believe because yeah. the AI is really Ooh. good. I'm just getting wrecked, guys. I'm just getting wrecked. Yeah. Come on. Ah. Boo, his boo. Ah. Ah. Okay, whatever. It's so <laughs> random, too. Ah. Oh, well. Dad. Now you're full health. Oh. Oh, no, no. Oh. Oh. What am I doing? Oh. I'm doubling down. James wouldn't put up with that bar. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have gone in. I would have gone back out. Oh, no, you're trying. You got it. At least there's no bar. Yeah. Like Trapped with a bar sucks. You're not giving me anything. Just Some, coins. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. I remember when I was oh, playing, God. I got like every room for the first two levels. I was getting something. And then nothing for like... It's very random. The kind of good thing about the dragon is, like is every guy you you reset. Isn't that hilarious? Man, I'm like, just oh, you going for it? Well, yeah, man, because I just like I would rather just like oh, here it comes. I'm just gonna instantly die. Yeah, yeah. But that's okay. But now you've got your you try and use that as much as you can before you lose it. Just avoid, avoid, avoid. Is it an amount of ammo or an amount of time? Uh, for your projectile? Oh. No, it's you. If you have full health, do, 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 do. <gasps> you did it! Nice. Oh my god, oh, second that? boss. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, what can you do? <laughs> second, <laughs> second boss. Oh, no. That's rough, man. What can you do? I didn't see that second boss. No. You did really good. Yeah. Uh, well, we, we, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to order the pizza, please? Yeah. What, what kind of pizza do people want? My normal one. Yeah. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you like? I'll eat anything. I might just get pizza? a burger from up, up the, the road. Up the street, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's easier so that we'll way. get our there normal might be ones? Or? Hold on. Uh, well, it's about the crust, right? Yeah. Do, yeah. do you want meat? Pardon? Do you want meat? I don't like want meat. Pizza? I'm, I'm oh, always down for that, but okay, that's... like pepperoni or something like that? Uh, like, a, like a meat lover or something with okay. just like... Okay, we're going to go to Spies in the Night too. Okay, cool. Uh, come with me and maybe we can order something. Here we go. Got it. Yeah, thanks, uh, McMeans. Oh, I yeah, thank it. you. That is such a great game. Such a great game. And we will be returning again because we have to... Spies yeah. in the Night too. Because we have to beat that game. We were you were really close, and you know you die, and if you defeat the dragon, it doesn't reset the dragon. I'm pretty sure. Ooh, right. So yeah, if I had like a little bit more, if you had, if you had full four lives. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Grouchy. No meat, all the meat. All the meat. I'm from Alberta, so yeah, I'm <laughs> legally obliged to support the cow industry. That's right. Um. um so we want to did we i think we beat game one i think so so let's just go to game two and this is now, random right i think we mapped out part of game two. Oh no game three is game r is random okay we go up no go up. i think game two is random because it's only one and two. Oh, we don't have I, I don't have the the one that gives all three levels oh cool the third level is random this one is a, just a second level sounds good which is harder um, do I have the notes for this? I do. Oh, Holy shit. So organized, man. Nope, that's not good. One way door, lock door. That's a different game. It's definitely a different game. That's a different game. Spies in the night. I'm not sure it's in here somewhere. Oh, there it is. There's one. Now, I think this is level one, though. Yeah, that so does I think we might like... have to start mapping level two. Let's do it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> now, I want to play. 
Cool. But we can always switch off, because we've got to do. play for a bit, and then I'm going to be reading out the Q&A. Yay! Okay, cool. So label that um, Spies in the Night level one, cool. or game one, and then make another one for game two. Um, James has an R RGB modded 2600. I like the heavy sixer on channel three on CRT and S video upscale for frame meister with scan lines on LCD. Yes, um, mine is an RGB. Oh, Andrew Davy's gone. Bye bye. Oh, I wanted to say before Andrew Davy um, left, I want to thank him so much because we will soon be able to play Boulder Dash oh, shit. on the channel which Andrew Davey and Thomas Yentz put together a while back. It completely sold out. It was a limited edition run. But he has been able to obtain, through Al, um, the cooperation of all these people, sh it's en route right now, a copy of Boulder Dash, so we, a full shit. copy, so we'll be able to be playing it on the show, finally. Because I, because there's demo. You can download a demo yeah. for free. But I wanted to play the full proper game because I wanted to do it properly. Well, right? then it showcases it, too, so if people are yes. interested in it... Yeah, they well, they won't be able to buy it, but, <laughs> <laughs> but there are rumblings and musings of possible Ooh. second runs in some form, but that has not been, that's just been started the talk, so we'll get more into that um, when we do play it, but I just want to thank um, Andrew Davey for kicking that whole thing off, and everybody else agreeing to make this happen, um, because there was one boulder dash that was being transported all over the world like people were handing it off but I missed that because it, it got finished it was finished yeah, a couple yeah. of years ago I think and I was gonna get in on that and have it on the show um, but this is this is great I suppose this says uh, yeah Boulder Dash 2600 I'd loan you mine but $20 I know it's killer. the shipping and it, it's just it's just annoying we would play Pink Panther well that's not a homebrew so no it's it's a game from back in the day was that was unreleased even though it is um, tell them if I'm somebody takes it and updates it, then then hell yeah, and fixes it, then possibly that turns it into something that's kind of an updated kind of homebrewy. But yeah, we don't. We play homebrew new games for classic consoles. Okay, game two, floor one. You ready? Oh yeah. And you got all those symbols? I or? think so. Okay, so this will just be a mapping one. We're not going for time. So what's so, it? So we're going for left. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yep. It's uh, the two lines. I think that was our line. Yeah. Our... And the other one is the spotlight, which is, which is the, the turret. Oh, is it? Or is it the turret? I think it's, it's the turret. The line and the... Yeah. Yeah. Which one do I like? I think I like this one. Uh, it depends. How do I do this? you got to ba duck? Ba face backwards. So you can't be face forwards. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's like, oh, the, okay. it's like the it's like the other one. Yeah, it's like, like the pedophiles <laughs> all over again. That's right. <laughs> Same mechanic, except there's two of them running around. Okay, floor two is the spot. The little Ooh, diamond, right? I don't right? know what that symbol is. Diamond, I think. And question mark. And question mark. I'm gonna go, go for qu question mark because I'll do diamond right there. it is a uh, nothing. A whole lot of nothing. No. Spies and the Night is great. I can't wait to see part of the... Yeah, this game is so good. The first one was awesome, and this one just question, takes it to another question level. Question mark and... Question mark? Lightning. Lightning. And this one is... Plus 15 time. That's great. Which is always good. Always go for That's that. That's what we need. Floor four. Oh! The, the, well, um... Deep Stone Catacomb. Yeah, we're just mapping it out, so I will change it. Thank you for letting me know. Thanks, guys. So much stuff's going on. Spies in the Night too. It actually makes it easier when I'm scanning through afterwards, and I'm trying to find what games I played, to just look for that symbol. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, too. Who said that? Oh, oh, oh pack pack rat. Thank you. So a question mark and spotlight. spotlight. Always question mark, even if it's bad. Oh, it's bad. Minus 15. So we never want to go there again. Cool. And then number five. I can't wait for this to come out because the programmer, Jared, Jared, 
Oh my God, I've forgotten his name. West? Jared Gray West, yes. Um, always makes super duper great packages. So they're both lightning bolts. And he puts a whole bunch of extras in them. Come on. I need to see it again. Up here. Ooh, this is one so, so many blocks and it in the floor. so long. Oh my god. I just accidentally pushed up to the right. Okay. I think I'm good. Yay! Okay. Whoa. Sick. Floor six. I think there's more floors on this one. Oh yeah, and there's way more time too. So yeah. it's like... so question mark again and a lightning bolt and a nothing. Which you get to bypass it. That's really quick. So even going to a nothing is faster than going through some of these floors. And that's a um, spotlight thinger. Cool, right? Yeah, turret I think. Turret and a turret. Oh, yes. So this is more like the original game with a random... Oh, oh so we got it reversed, actually. It's not the turret. It's oh. the diamond. This is the diamond. Yeah, yeah the okay. other one's the turret. Whatever. You can... We'll be okay. Make sure you redo all the ones that are wrong. Oh, I think I'm going to make it. Yay. Yay. Floor eight. And I love the aesthetic of this game. Yeah, the black words. and white aspects. Yeah, the, oh, oh, we should have checked. That's okay. Damn it. Okay, it's the spotlight. It's always difficult in the middle. Oof. It's very random movement. I think he improved it since play we played it the first time because it was just like killing us every time. So, question mark and lightning bolt. Is it floor nine? Yeah. Ooh, nice. Plus 30. That's a key one. That one's really, really good. That's, that's critical. Yeah. Uh, question, question mark. mark. A lot of question marks. And then that's a, a whatever. Is that a diamond? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's find out what this question mark is. It's probably going to be bad. Oh, plus 10 floors. So we're going to be going quite fast. We're going to be skipping a bunch. Whoa. Okay, floor 20. So you jump up to 20 there. Yeah. No, 20 up here. I mean, uh, yeah, I can do oh. it. I, I, I was just going to add it because, I mean, I don't know if you would I, I know. would do it. Okay. There might be a plus 30 or who knows. Okay, that one is the... That's a turret. Turret. And then that's the diamond. Um, I think I like this one. Oh, this is the original one. Duck. Okay. It really depends on what mood you're in. <laughs> it does. <gasps> Living life on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> so this game is, um, this demo is available in the Atari Age forums. Uh, those lines can be insane. Oh god. Or they I think could this be is easy. where I die. I only have three seconds left. I mean, I would. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you just can't be moving. That's it. Okay. Now, do you want to play or do you want to? Oh, you mapping? can keep. No, I'll keep mapping. Okay, so you have gotta let it. Do you want to? Do you want to make room? Just let me let me think for a second. <laughs> we can move these I over. I can sit on the floor. No, well, you won't be on camera. And there's room. Is it? Is this? The He's just hogging room? it all yeah. with his legs. Look at those legs taking up all the space. <laughs> <laughs> I think they call that man's Oh, 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 oh uh, careful! Oh, you okay? you're crushing these things and possibly breaking. Them. Oh, oh, oh no, no! Don't mess with the tech. It's just the one back hit. Yeah. <laughs> just the once. Uh, yeah, breaking my nice. thirty-year-old tech. There. It's okay. We've got extra. My soft, cushiony <laughs> back. <laughs> okay, left or right left, right? Whichever one you want. I go left, probably. I go left at this point. Oops. Were you moving when that line went across? I was. I just barely... And there? Were you moving? <laughs> <laughs> There's a slow... A slight I know you slide, down. right? Yeah. Just There's a, a rhythm to bit. it. Yeah. Which, I mean, which gives always, the game the right one it is the one you want to do. Up, it's but nothing. Like, yeah. Once you get this, used to it, I imagine... Is this Spies in the Night 2? Yes. This isn't the one with the, the lighthouses, then. And then, uh, um, you're technically plus 15 left. You're technically. Go left. This is this. Left? 
is just nothing. Plus oh, 15. 15. Yeah, this is this year. And then right is the next is one. Is that plus 15 too. seconds or floors? Seconds. seconds. There's an arrow when it's arrow up or down. Yeah. And the, right. the levels are beautiful. The turret thing is very cool. Yeah, just the variety of mini... It's like a mini game collection. And it's just amazing. Oh, this has... Oh, yeah. So this is the original game that kind of came with... It was Spies in the Night 1. The whole game this was, was this. This was this, yeah. I like this. It's cool. Yeah, so they I retained like the this. the monochrome nature of the... Of Doesn't the matter. Either too. one's the same. Oh, okay. What is this? Fight the Dragon? <laughs> no. Looks Can like you... the dragon from that other game. Oh! Moved up! Why are you walking into that thing? <laughs> I'm not aware of exactly where it is. Is there another? Too close. No. Are you? Oh. There must be one more space over to the right. Is there? Oh yeah. <gasps> yeah. Oh then no. Ah! 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 Joystick. I think it might be your joystick. It's. Yeah. It is. It's pushing up to the left. There's some issues with this joystick. Oh, I can't do that. So your head can be in it. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, it's Go to feet. the left. It's your your feet. feet have to be... Okay. It's going to be it's, nothing. The feet will kill you. Your head is fine. Your head is fine. Go to the left. Press the button. It's nothing. Cool. That's great. It's quick, right? Yeah, and then doesn't matter. Both are the same. Oh, okay. You know, so have you seen this? No, game? I haven't seen this oh, one. I've, really? seen, I've seen number one. That's what I said. That's go to the right because we didn't map this one. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious what it is. Um, so which one do I like? What, what is this one? That's turret. That's right? the yeah. Okay, that's fine. Walks so slow. <laughs> There's a little slide. slide little, little bit of a slide. Border. For a dancer. <laughs> it's a slippery floor. So plus 30 left. Nice. And then plus 10 floors. Mmm, very nice. Uh, oh, Stephen can answer questions in the chat that... Uh, I just don't feel comfortable with video. Oh, that's all cool. Yeah, man. I barely feel comfortable with video. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow I'm here, so I get it. <laughs> um, turret is left, like diamond thing is right. So which one you prefer? Uh, yeah. I don't think I want to do those lines anymore at this level. Yeah, they're they're kind of messed up. Deadly man. at this level. These don't get much harder, I don't find. Is they it... get they get faster as it goes on. I would go left then. It will be electricity. Because the yeah. other ones are lines, so... This, I mean, this but Jim hates but, these. Well, no. It's better I than do, lines. But it's better than lines. Oh, ah! Too far. Too slidey. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> 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 He's like electrocuted. It's, it's the, the line. That's awesome. Yeah. Play by play reactions. And Zero reactions. page homebrew. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good yeah. stuff. Um, I don't. We're in uncharted territory, man. Are so we? whichever, nice. whichever. Let's check out How both time sides. Time do I have left? It oh, gives a minutes. symbol Why? as to what the room is, or you, you've never mark. been there before. Uh, like, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Question always mark. go with the question. It could send you back. No. Minus fifteen. <gasps> you lose time. Minus fifteen yeah. seconds. So That's we don't go there next time. <laughs> no. But now we know. Yeah. Now we know. We learn from our mistakes at zero page number. So you get one room per floor. Is that the idea? I'm feeling left. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, it's fine. Yep. Uh, you pick one room out Each of floor. out of the two. Yeah. So whichever one you feel comfortable with, or there's bonuses, and they are all the same. Ooh, no. Was that lines? Uh -oh. oh God! They force you. They're like, yeah, you're not getting past. Yeah, we heard that you weren't doing lines anymore. This one actually. <laughs> this one's not bad. Those up and down the, things. And it reminds me of skipping brutal. double dutch. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you have to you have to independently keep your brain on both lines of both both ropes. It's a question and a question again. Okay, so let's do left. Last question is. Oh no! Floors. Do it all again. Do the right though, because we'll get to find out like oh, what that uh, what that one is now. So we're on. Maybe it'll boost me up. Twenty-two. Oh no, this one is uh, yeah. Go electricity. 
Um, the other one is minus 15 seconds. I go. So, unfortunately. I go on that's a hell of a ringtone. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Just yeah. Oh, good. That wasn't too bad. Next one is the right. Let's see what the right is because it, we we already did the left. Do you guys like homebrews on cart? Or are you fine with ROMs? I don't care. Same Do game. It right. I mean, yeah. I mean, I love. We'll find out the what packaging. Is. Oh yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it would you be enough. You jumped up five floors. Yep. Um, I love the packaging and the artwork and the instruction manual and some of the bonuses you get. So that's uh, a whatever. I'm not sure in the same belief. That's a. Uh, Whoa! We're getting into <gasps> craziness now. Oh! 30 seconds left. <laughs> Shot. Oh, God. Oh Shot. Hopefully the floor 30 is the maximum. Let's see. Question. Always question. No, back again. <laughs> 10 seconds left. Yeah, I'm dead. Um, do the right. I think. Or you can do the left. I mean, they're both they're both pretty messed up. They're both pretty messed up. At this point. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Five seconds. Best manual could be a category in next year's award. Designs um, are underappreciated. That's true. No, no, it's part of the packaging. That, that it's it's best packaging. So that's included in best packaging. Oh yeah, we didn't talk about that. That's another. Okay, so we're gonna get to the Q and A. But you can play. Do you want to play this? You haven't played it ever. So. And you I will can be. Navigate. I will be your guide. Okay. Tanya. But you have it all mapped out. So sort of. Tell me the best route. I recommend left. So I'm going to talk about... Um, I, I sent out some questions oh, to... Um, I think we might have done a different one. Stephen Anthony. Oh. You have to play level okay. one. What? Level two. Sorry, game two. Okay. Change it to game two. There you go. Um, and he's the maintainer of Stella for Stella. almost 20 years. Cool. Yeah. And I'm just going to load it on you here. You have to not move when they go through you. And then you have to play too many of these. So let me just transfer over that uh, Q and A. So too just too hold on for one second. As Tanya plays this, it is a challenging game, especially game two. So I can't go right. It won't be anything. It'll be a question mark, and then they'll they won't penalize you. And where is? There it is. And we've also got. Um, then go left. You're gonna get some time. We've got Steve in the chat. I believe, yeah, he's still there, and he can answer any uh, additional questions you have about Stella. It doesn't matter whichever one's the same. Which one. He says, uh, first of all, I want to credit all the others that have helped on Stella. Uh, see the main contributors list on the Stella webpage. There are too many names to mention here. But I have to single out a few. Without them, Stella wouldn't be where it is okay. today. And I probably would have stopped working on the project years ago. The interview mostly oh, concentrate so. on me, but there are many more people that uh, made it all possible. <laughs> uh, Brad Mott, hopefully I pronounce all these names right. Uh, the original author of Stella and served as a guide until I took over maintainership in 2005 or so. Uh, Brian Watson, original developer that added the initial debugger support in Stella, which is, in my honest opinion, a real crowning achievement for 2600 emulators. It's so, so helpful and let me, lets you look under the hood of what's going on in these games, um, especially for developers and tracking what's going on in RAM. Okay. Thomas Jentsch, uh, too much to mention, has worked on all areas of the code and gave many ideas. He was originally a Z26 user. Uh, but after many Stella improvements that he suggested, we eventually won him over. So, so much now that he's a member of the Stella team. <laughs> Christian Speckner updated the TIA core on, in Stella 5 based on his work uh, in his own project, Stellarator. This is perhaps the largest improvement to Stella over in the past 10 years. He is also a member of the Stella team. Uh, Daryl Spice Jr., Helped with uh, development on various bank switching schemes, uh, DPC, DPC Plus, 
CDF, bus, etc. And also made nice improvements to the debugger. Chris Brenner donated Cycle Exact Sound from his 2600 FPGA project. Ah, that's where it came from. With Christian and myself integrated it into Stella 6, which just got released not too long ago. This makes Stella Stellarator the first 2600 emulators with Cycle Exact audio. Um, I asked him, what drew you to the Atari 2600 and keeps you well, interested in it? Doesn't matter. It was the first gaming system I owned. I vividly remember getting it used with its 11 inch black and white television and Keystone Capers and Space Invaders, which we just recently got the patch for Keystone Capers. Uh, this must have been around 1983 or so. It had it for a few years, then moved on to NES, then C64, then Amiga. Stuck with the Amiga until the mid-90s, then moved to PC, Linux. I took several courses in university about virtual machines and emulation. When I graduated, I became interested in working on such a project. Looked around in the late 90s and saw that NES had all kinds of emulators, but the 2600 had one that hadn't really been maintained for a few years. Stella, of course. I looked into it and played it with it for a while. <laughs> Then I had major illness in 2000 or so where I basically couldn't leave my house for six months. To pass this time, I uh, started working on Stella and submitted my first patch. Uh, still have it, 52K. And the rest is history, I guess. I picked Stella because it was a C++ versus assembly that I was used to in other projects. And because felt it was a simple system. And it would be easy to understand. Little did I know that I would end up being the most complex of all older systems. But that complexity is what keeps it interesting, and you never know what somebody's going to come up with next. I stick with it because it's not done yet. And I know there's a huge list of to-do uh, for the for Stella. Uh, and then I asked, tell us a little bit about the week-to-week -week operations that it's go into terrible. maintaining the Stella code base. At minimum, uh, when I don't get to do any coding, etc., it's still four, about four hours a week answering messages in Atari age, personal mails, talking with developers, going over to GitHub, and thinking about bug reports, etc. During development, it can reach easily reach 15 hours a week or more. Sadly, I haven't been able to get much done over the last months or so, real life issues, but I'm hoping to get back into it, uh, to it in a week or so. During crunch time, which is self-imposed since I'm technically not on a schedule, it can involve many hours. I remember working 30 to 40 hours a week on Stella occasionally, and that's with a full-time job. That doesn't happen very often anymore, thankfully. The extra members on the Stella team over the past few years have really helped. Aside from the normal development, I occasionally do some refactoring, essentially repaying some technical debt. Because the project is so old, some of the code comes from a time when the C++ standard wasn't as nice as current versions. So I work on converting old code to C++ 11, C++ 14 where appropriate. An interesting aside, every time I sit down and log onto a computer, into a computer, home, work, wherever, the first thing I do is open a terminal window and change to the Stella directory. I do this without thinking, almost religiously, for the past 15 years. Third question, are you surprised at the continual innovations going on in the Atari 2600 programming community after all these years? For example, I gave him CDFJ, uh, Uno Kart, etc. Surprised at the actual innovations, but not the people that are still working on it. I suspect the many active 2600 developers, both hardware and software, were original users of the 2600. Since it was probably their first introduction to electronic gaming, I suspect it holds a special place in their hearts. <laughs> at least that's large, a large part of the reason I'm still interested. I always try to get these latest innovations integrated into Stella. See number five about that. So, question four. Can you talk a little bit about the amazing work that went into the Stella code that turned the Retron 77 from a terrible purchase into a great emulation machine? I did a bit of initial work in creating specific version for the R77, release 3.9.4, and that's the one that was on there. It fixed some very glaring bugs, joystick stopped working, and backported CDF to the, that release, allowing to play some of the latest homebrews. But it was still based on the version of Stella that was 8 years old and contained many bugs that have been fixed for ages. So we had to get Stella 5 slash 6 running on this device. But before that could happen, some history as follows. I redesigned Stella over the years in such a way that it is very abstracted. So in approximately 260,000 lines of code, only about a thousand lines or less are needed for each port. That's pretty good. So the differences between Windows, Mac OS, and Linux ports are most at most 2,000 3,000 lines. 
Incidentally, this is why, also why Stella has been ported to nearly every platform under the sun. It was designed as cross-platform application from the very beginning, thanks to Brad Mott. So if we can get a new platform to look like one of the big three, Windows, Mac OS, Linux, then perhaps 90% of the work is already done. Credit to credit is where credit is due. Much of the heavy lifting to get Stella 6 even able to run on the R77 is due to Christian Spechner. Um, I believe that's Dirty Harry. Um, Dirty Harry? Is that a name? Uh, basically, he got the code released from Hyperkin to the point where it was just another Linux system. Once he did that, and that was the bulk of the work, then development for the system is like on any other Linux system. So my work is much easier on from that point. Uh, I can compile and test changes on my local Linux system and then connect to the R77 over SSH and then send the uh, changes directly uh, there directly. Once we got that working, it was time for the finishing touches. Fixing controller, losing settings, uh, overscan, vsync, etc. All these were possible with Stella 6. And in fact, many of them are due to Thomas J. And this is all still a work in progress. Look for a new beta release soon. Awesome. Can you turn the game audio down? It's hard to hear James. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this is uh, a lot of noise in this game. A lot of crashing. Either way. Yeah, that should be a better level. Sorry, didn't see that. Uh, number five, how closely do you work with developers in updating this code of Stella to make it work with the cutting edge new homebrews? I guess Stella has become well known at this point and compatibility with it is considered important to developers. So when a new bank switching scheme comes along, the developers normally seek me out to get it. Is that pizza? Yeah. Hold up. Sorry. You can uh, navigate and play. <laughs> I got this. Yeah, man, and don't worry about your answers being too technical. It's really interesting stuff, and it's that's why we're here, man. Yeah, yeah. And thank you for taking the time to answer all of our questions. I mean, this is for every level of people. I mean, a lot of the people watching here are very technical, um, but some some aren't, and they're just they can watch us play games. Yeah, man. <laughs> and just hear, hear our banter. Um, so when a new bank switching scheme comes along, the developers normally seek me out to get it added. I usually don't have to contact them first. In some cases, they provide the specs of their new scheme, and I implement it. In other cases, where the scheme is more complex and the developer is still working on it, they often provide the implementation themselves. Daryl Spice Jr. is an example of this. He personally provided much of the code for the CDF and bus schemes and updates for the DPC Plus schemes. I want to integrate every new scheme that comes along. If a new homebrew comes along that doesn't work in Stella, then it's a bug that needs to be fixed. Did you? Uh, question six. Did you think you'd still be maintaining Stella after almost 20 years later? Honestly, absolutely not. My wanted items to add to Stella were done after the first year or two. So I simply stopped when I had everything personally I wanted at that time. I would have been done in 2003 or so, but something always comes up, uh, which turned it, which turned into major milestones. First was the change from strictly console app to a UI-based one. That was a big change. Then an integrated code based on SDL, so that Windows, Mac, OS, Linux ports are essentially the same thing. Then debugger support. That was a big one. And then TIA video and audio. That's a noisy room. I'll wait. Uh, and with the new bank switching schemes, it keeps going. Yeah, there's just a CDFJ is a brand new one. There's always something left to do. So I guess the time just went by, and now it's almost 20 years later. I've taken large breaks over the years. The longest was approximately nine months away from the project completely. But more recently, particularly in the past three years, I've been pretty much constant. That corresponds with Christian and jo uh, Thomas joining the team and really helping with the workload with new ideas. Motivation plays a big part, of course. I was definitely hired for one, for one job based on Stella. Uh, the employer, oh, he was hired for a job based on Stella. The employer specifically said that my Stella history on SourceForge was a contributing factor. And a large part of my early involvement was with building my resume. Uh, feedback from users over the years really helps and this marathon is a great example so i'm glad we can oh, contribute to uh oh, this is a hard level yeah uh contribute to the uh ongoing push um if i see people are interested in the project then i will continue with it that's continued for almost 20 years yeah. so i'm still here <laughs> what is the future for stella 
is the seventh question I asked. To make it the best 2600 emulator available, having support for all bank switching schemes, all controller types, etc. Basically, to be to a point where you never need to use real hardware at all. Many people will, of course, myself included. Many people will. Oh yeah, use real hardware like we do here. Um, but I would like to get at a point where uh, if someone doesn't have real hardware, then they won't be disadvantaged. And that's a great point, just to go for a side tangent for a second, that eventually all this hardware will stop working. And you will come to a point where this emulator needs to be perfect. And so you can continue playing this in a hundred years. Um, finishing, uh, da -da -da, finishing up all the remaining bug ports and enhancements on GitHub. But honestly, that list is growing faster than we can keep up for the immediate future, which is amazing that there's still things being found um, and additions needing to be done. Uh, work on debugger improvements. My background interest is in making developers' lives easier. I don't know how to write a game for the 2600, and if we're being honest, I don't think I have the creativity for it. It's amazing that the guy who maintains the emulator can't write a game for 2600, but, you know, that's how it goes. That's the gig, man. Yeah. Um, but if I can help other developers come up with excellent games, then I'd like to think I've done my part. Just like us, we're playing games, but, I mean, I could write a game, and I do want to write a game, but I just don't have the time to write a game at the moment. Hopefully, hopefully I will in the future. Um, yeah, his other one is improve the RetroArch support. Uh, this is still in beta for what I will, what will become version 6.1. But I'm getting the latest Stella working in Lib Retro. Uh, we'll open it up to many people. I think At Games will be using it in their next flashback, but don't quote me on that. That's exciting. Hopefully it has all the bells and whistles, and it's a nice flashback. Uh, integrate Stella more fully into my lectures. I'm a computer science lecturer at our local university. Whenever I teach a course in C++, data structures, etc., I like to include Stella in the discussion. We talk about how concepts are not just dry uh, details, but are actually used in mature, real-world software projects. Students really seem to enjoy that. It makes more, things more interesting for me, too. Finally, just to conclude, uh, ju finally, just to continue working on Stella and hope that it holds people's interests. Eventually, we'll get back to cheap F PGA for 2600. Sim uh, eventually, we'll get to cheap F PGA for 2600 emulation, definitely. But I don't see Stella ever disappearing completely. It'll always be a better option for some use cases, particularly for development. Definitely for development, so you can program on your computer. And why would you need an F PGA in your computer? It's not necessary. Uh, he said, and he concludes, here's to another 20 years, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if I'll still be at it, but I'm going to give it a try. So thank you so much um, for that amazing interview, um, Stephen Anthony. And thank you for working on the Stella Code for all these many, many years and uh, continuing to maintain it and having it there for developers, um, for me, because I, I test out programs that I want to put on the show. I, I use I use the uh, line count most. And if I see anything straying from those 262 lines or whatever lines, as long as it's a stable line count, I know that I can play the game on my show. And it's not going to be flickery. It's not going to cut out the video. It's not going to go, oh my god, the video's gone. So I use it extensively. And I almost... I Right now I put my blind trust in Stella that if it says 262 and it doesn't go red on the screen, I know that it's going to work on a real machine. That's how much trust I have in, have in Stella now, for sure. It, it's just so, so interesting to dive into the details of, of game programming and see all the, the logic and what's in RAM and what people are using to make these games because you can look at, oh, what are they using in the game for play field what are they using for player zero player one what's where are the missiles being used where's the ball being used um especially interesting on if you look at demos it's unbelievable um the amount of work that's going on behind the scenes and stella allows you to see how these programmers are making these games it's unbelievable um so yep uh, Stephen is in the chat, so if you want to ask any further questions um, on him, 
Is this a new version of Game R? No, it is not a new version of Arena Foot. This is the demo version. Because the old... I, I have an older version without Game R. Um, so I don't have an up-to-date one, so I thought I would just... And we haven't completed level 2 yet, so... That was kind of the goal today, is to play on level 2. So I didn't really need the, um, the new version. But uh, I'll probably wait for the final release, or when it does get released, to play this on the stream. And to promote the uh, to mo promote the release of the game, um, so this one is good enough for now until we actually beat level two. I think I got pretty close. How many levels? I'm guessing thirty. Oh. But uh, I remember it being higher than that when they mentioned. I thought it was like fifty. Or I something. thought it was yeah, like a, like a, like a, a stupid lot. like wow craziness. I think we have the final two uh, spies two rum. Oh, excellent. It'd be interesting to, to know if he's going to be releasing that at Portland Retro Gaming Expo, or is he going to release it before that? Because he always has these great um, pre-release um, first edition packs, so we'll find out more about that soon. Oh, shit. You lost? Oh, oh you don't know which level? Right. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. So after this um, game, I think we're going to move on to the next game. Cool. Let's see what it is. What's happening here. So I don't think... We don't have another call for 6 p.m. I'm going to check my notes here. So I've jumped up five floors. Yeah, and then you're going to go to the right, I think. I we're find at 28. You I find you do better with these ones than the other ones. I keep giving you these, but I think you're better at them. Which one? The lines or the... Yeah, yeah these yeah, ones... Oh this one's tough, but compared to, like, the one where you have to, like, run and then duck... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was one time... I find it really slow, the movement. Yeah. Really slow. What was that. interesting with that one was I noticed that... Um, oh, my God, this is not good. <laughs> there's one that was minus 15, and then that one. Yeah. But I noticed that that one, if you did it, like, perfectly, you get to do it in about 15 seconds. Yeah. So I was like, why not just do the minus 15... Because, like, if it's going to take you 15 seconds, if you nail it, oh well, then, like, and what are the odds of you nailing it? I'd, you know what I mean? It's better <laughs> to just have a guaranteed... Maybe you could do, like, a marginally faster, but... A bad cat. <gasps> Kitten. Bad cat. Back again. Can tell. Oh, so bad. Up to no good. So bad. bad news. Oh, it's okay. This is hard shit, it's man. It's, like, really fast. It's like the moment I see him, the thing it, the yeah. thing gets me. Cause By I the way, James only made it one level past this, so you did quite well. <laughs> yeah. I, I like to hear that. <laughs> How far uh, did you get, Erlen? Oh, I haven't played this yet. Oh, really? Up You've our... just been mapping? I don't mind mapping. I, I, yeah, he does I, a lot I'm of mapping. A, I'm a good cartographer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Setting up Nathan Strum's phone in, and he'll be uh, calling in at 7 p.m. Yeah, I'm not going to. He just I'm passed me over. Level his information maybe the other one is easier I don't know point. I mean it's just fast it's like anything there we go. hi hot cat I'm dying uh, there's pizza, pizza yeah, upstairs man. the dying pizza has arrived heat. so and dying of lack of food you too. should go get some food yeah dude and then then let um Erlen play this game yeah you do you want to go go do that now is a I, good time yeah. yeah it's a good time to do that what is going on here I'm having trouble Getting. What are you trying to catch? Nathan. Nathan Strum. In Skype. Mm. It's just not working. Atari realized this is the most I don't important know. I thing. I can't find him. Oh yeah. So. He's cause... really good for that. Pixel. Um, absolutely loves lying across keyboards on yeah. laptops. So. He was. He was uh, messing. We're gonna with go on to uh, Galaga. Are we? Are we? Yep. Sick. Nice. So, do you want to bust out the second joystick as well? Just sure. to, so you guys can I don't know where play it the two-player? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I'll get it. Yeah, and fine. then I'll get pizza. Cool. Um, Nathan, are you in the chat? Yes. Nathan. Auction. Yeah, we'll find out in a sec. Yeah, we we'll just got to get some food. We've been, we're coming up to the five and a half hour mark. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, which, which Nathan, can you not quite possibly try and set up uh, Google Hangouts? Because I, I don't know what's going on with Skype. It's just not just recognizing you. Um, but we have time to time to do that. And we'll check in the auction after I get back. Mm. But I'm going to get out a second joystick and set up Galaga for these guys. Sick. Thanks, mm. man. Ah. Oh. Here. Here. 
No, 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 don't move anything, it's crushing my foot. Ow. Oh God. It's on my foot. <laughs> oh yeah, this will be better with this controller for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, this will be the second controller. Sick. Because there's a two player. Love it. I, I love how people leave the room, the cats just take their spots. Oh yeah. It's how it goes. Yeah. They want to be part of the show. I that know. Important. Look at this guy. Oh, Nathan's going to take a look, man. Oh, okay, good. Okay. So that's great news. Mm. Okay, so we'll go back to the video camera. Oh, this lens. It's terrible. <laughs> Which lens? Oh, this. That guy? This super wide lens oh. that we put on. Yeah, because we need to somehow get four people on frame. So it's like, it's, yeah. we currently have a 13 millimeter lens on, and then this and is then my if camera. And then if you're on the ends, you're all distorted. Or you Scroll look huge. Uh, Middle button. Yeah. Excellent. I'll get you all geared up for Galaga. So this one? Yeah. Games? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I made sure that I only put in the ones. It's the bottom? Yeah. I always forget. Me too. <laughs> there we go. Two player co op on easy, Galaga. That's. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Uh, go to easy and then you can or novice and then you can both start playing immediately really yeah cool oh so we both right? start on the screen i don't have to capture a no nope. capture and hello darcy i know <laughs> okay so i'm gonna get pizza and then i'll be back sick man shortly <laughs> Oh. Let's do this. <laughs> we'll almost have to like take breaks out of this room because with four people and two cats in here, it's, it's a lot of it heat. Is, it is a lot of heat. <clears throat> okay, so do we do both play at the I same time? Both, yeah, we both start. Whoa. Oh my. Yeah, oh. pretty fancy. Do you bump into each other or pass through? Yeah, and you can force people um, over to the right or left hand side if you feel like being a dick. No. <laughs> That's rough. It's kind of fun. Wow. That's really good. This is cool that this is an option, Tanya. I'm super yeah. into this. It's really, really fun. Yay! It's a bit You're easier sure. when there's two people blasting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you share a score and points? Uh, oh, yeah, that's a good question. I'm not out. sure. It looks Sorry. like one score. I said a score and points. What I meant oh, was no. a score and Good lives. Luck, Tanya. No, I believe I believe in you. It's been a while. It's been a while. Ah. Okay, now I can pass. Right. There you go. You're up next, I think. I think it alternates at past this point, so. Space. That's okay. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> just don't lean back on the monitor. Okay. Oh. And we're gonna. Don't kill me. Whatever you do. Check in on the uh, auctions. God. Oh yes, there was a um, some donations that came in. Um, so I guess you just released me. So why so, why did I even bother getting captured? <laughs> so Drew, uh, Drew donated fifty dollars. Oh, to Stella, that's, that's amazing. That was useless, wasn't it? Uh, Drew guess, says, yeah, "Hey, I guess you have to both hey, hey, hush it, hush it." Well, we're talking we're doing about Atari video games. I know. <laughs> uh, Drew donated fifty dollars oh. to Stella. Nice to the Stellathon. Uh, happy to help out. Much love and thanks to the Stella authors and testers. So thank you so much, Drew. That's a very generous donation. Ooh, going double on the bonus. Oh, you missed one. You missed one. It's more than one. More than one. Many more than one. Seven. Okay, so let's check in on the auctions and how they're going. Oh, damn now, this game is up for auction. Galaga, complete in box, and it is currently at $315 with 42 bids and five people watching it. Um, Astronomers at $51. Halo 2600 is at $73. Uh, 
Gold Rush is at $112.50. Jesus. Stay Frosty is at $73. Nice. Medieval Mayhem, $36.27. Stella's Stocking, $34. The Retron 77 is at $355. Draconia's at $47, Space Rocks $51, Atari Homebrew Companion Volume 1 and 2 is at $31. I want to thank Arena Foot who's in the chat now. Yeah, it's up to 9 bids and $31 for his two books. They are signed. All of these things are signed. And the Space Rocks poster signed is at $20.50. And I wish I could add up these all really quickly, but I think it does in the, the web version of it. See if I can. <clears throat> Go to that. It should add it up, I think. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, it's annoying. Says 12 active. Oh, no total. But I will add it up after I eat the pizza. How would I know if I'm at 60 frames a second? Uh, point to the video, click on the gear in the lower right. Well, you're in Switch. So I'm not sure how Switch shows, but people can help you. <laughs> all the on, um, donators that have donated money and all the people who are bidding on the auction items. Um, must be getting close to a thousand dollars now. Um, total. If you're watching on uh, Twitch, make sure you are watching at 60 frames a second because um, many modern homebrews take advantage of all 60 frames and it does alternating. So some things like that and the text in the middle, that is two separate frames alternating back and forth to make it uh, give the persistence of a full frame. And if you're only watching at 30 oh, frames a second, nice. you will see a bunch of gobbledygook really. <laughs> yeah, it won't look like anything. That's one. Totally gonna win now. Uh, uh, you might as well both go up. It doesn't have to be one person at a time. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> Let's do it. BRB friends. Where's my mother? Oh, that's oh. Like... what name should I put? Oh, he needs fine. <laughs> oh. OL1? Oh, I it brought the. It was attached. OL1 well, looks good to me. She said. <laughs> he said anything. TL1, TK1, TK421. <laughs> oh, looks like Packrat got his uh, stream going to at 60 frames a second. Because this would look quite messy. But uh, we broadcast at 60 uh -oh. frames a second. Because. Um, Because the Atari is 60 frames a second. Stop it. I didn't do anything. <laughs> there you go. You're firing. I didn't do anything. You're firing. You start one. with two? Uh, no. Oh. It's on novice. Oh. It's on the easy level. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. good. But, good, good, so for beginners, it makes it uh, a lot more fun. Which is a nice little bonus in this version of Galaga. Mmm. Somebody's added up. Thank you, Arena Ah! Ah! 
$916.33 in U.S. dollars. That's amazing. Even more in Canadian dollars. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, but it doesn't make it more total. But, and it's that is relevant. A different number. Because Stephen is in Canada. Ah. So it is actually makes sense. Um, it just makes more sense to stick with U.S. dollars. It does. Because <laughs> most of the viewers are from the U.S. Um, and does that include all the donations as well? Um, from the donation page? Because there's a number of donations there. That may... May actually put it over the top. Sorry, I'm eating. Oh no, you're eating. I'm eating. How dare you sustain yourself. <laughs> Need to have food or we'll die. Oh no, I, d I did the... I did the stupid thing that means my game's over. It's all right. This is I will just eight, start over. Eighty-five dollars in donations <clears throat> on the GoFundMe page. So if you add that in, it's very close. I think that is in Canadian dollars. Canadian. I think, yeah, even though it doesn't say it. And then when it doesn't say it, I always assume it's U.S. dollars. Because I think most people would assume it's U.S. dollars. Oh, MK Smith AU says it's thirteen hundred dollars Australian. <laughs> All right, there we go. Even more. <laughs> That's right. That's awesome. <clears throat> no! It's not fun anymore. <laughs> Down to one ship. Mm -hmm. You can't get it back. I know, but. Okay, next Gallagher that comes down is gonna capture your ship. Don't shoot them. There you go. Let them get you. There you go. Should have shot him once, though, right? Mm, yes. Ooh. At least once. Now you have to shoot him. Twice. You said don't shoot him, so I, I don't assume kill him what you that. told me to do. Yeah. James. I was not being precise. I meant don't kill him. But I said don't shoot him. There you go, one more. No, not like that! <laughs> but he still has you, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> still worth it. There you go. Oh. It's really, really tough because his bullets are going down at the same speed as him. Mm -hmm. And I meant to um, talk to talk to John Shampoo about that because the arcade doesn't do it like that. Oh, that's the exact opposite. I know. In the arcade, it's really easy to get your ship back, but in this one, it's like really protective of your ship. But I needed to make um, a video showing the different patterns of um, um, the arcade version versus this version. Because when I was in um, Las Vegas, um, I played a bunch of Galaga. <laughs> and I noted that, that big difference between... <clears throat> oh, I only missed 13. <laughs> I mean, that's much easier when you have the two ships. Ah! Right for him! It's coming right at me. It is. Basically, the first level where they don't shoot at you is bad training. Oh, I got a Skype message. Where is it? Yay! It's Nathan Strum. Hooray! 
Oh, yeah, I had him before. That's really weird. Why was nice seeing him? Never mind. It's all good. It's all good, Nathan. So Nathan Strum is on in an hour and 15 minutes. We'll be talking with him. on the agenda. Oh, it's so hot in here. Oh, so after this we'll be playing um, Amoeba Jump. That's not in a little while. We'll be trying to beat Dianoid's high score of 21,000. Yeah, much easier with two, eh? <laughs> oh, I still missed lots of them. Four, apparently. Which is better. Extra life. Oh, I Sorry. see. If you know when they come in... You can shoot them before they drop on. Ah! <laughs> Not fun Whoa, anymore. Whoa, that was a close one again. Not fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Those. Scorpions. Flying scorpions. Mm-hmm. They break off and get you more points if you shoot them all. James, why is Galaga's ship yellow? Screenshots show white. My screen shows white. What are you guys seeing? He's a little yellow. Hmm. I, mean, I wouldn't say it was yellow. He's a little yellowish. <clears throat> yeah, it's not a Let's see if I can clear that little up, up a little bit. Of course, it's going to disrupt Darcy's game a little bit. Um, no, I'm doing well. You just have to wait. Okay. So after his game, do it, do it. But I can't shoot him back. <laughs> You'll get him back. You'll get your ship back. Score is off color too. Well, it's the same same white, right? Oh, I got him. Uh, no, <laughs> that's not what you want to do. No, why? What happens now? Because he comes and kills you. Oh, well, how am I supposed to know that? I don't know. It's assumed. It's common knowledge. It's common Galaga collective knowledge. You got points for your killing yourself. Not small points, pretty good points. Thousand points. Yay. Not worth it, though. <laughs> no, not worth it. Not at all, even close to my goal. Ah! You can get many more points by using the ship as an extra life. Yep. Yeah, on my screen here, it's very, very nice, nice white. But I can see it's a little tiny bit yellowy, a little off white. So I can see where you got coming from there. I wanted to see that, Darcy. That's where I found a bug. What's that? Oh, when you shoot, I'd still do it. Too late. <laughs> oh, you would still do it, but I'm... you can shoot the guy and get your guy back, and I cannot. <laughs> that is an important point. That is. <laughs> yeah, people are unscrewing that. Because when the color comes out of the um, Atari, 
It goes through many, many, many things to get to you guys. It goes from uh, the Atari onto an RGB chip, which outputs it into the Frame Meister. And the Frame Meister goes into a video capture card, which it goes into OBS, which then gets compressed, sent out to Twitch, comes to you and comes uncompressed. But, amazingly enough, it, it does a pretty amazing job. Alright, to level 8. Dude. Did anybody else... Get, okay, did, now what I'm going to fix the color. To? What did we get up to? Oh, I don't even know. But I was trying and you guys weren't. <laughs> I don't know about that. We were trying still, but we... But it's, an, it's a different thing when you're, like, taking turns. Because you can't get in a rhythm. I feel like it's like you're starting from, like, scratch each time, you know? <gasps> I did win. Dude, good work. By some small number of points. Let's see. What can I do? The saturation? No, what would make it yellow? What would make that white yellow on here? So I do have some color correction. I'll just turn it off, you know? I don't want to turn it off. How can I make that white instead of a tiny bit yellow. I've got saturation, hue shift, um, brightness, contrast, gamma. Hue shift? Try that. Okay. Um, and you just have to figure out which direction. Oh, can you start it again? The game? Yeah. I just need that... Uh... Oh, oh, I think I got yeah, it. Yeah, that'll do it. That's pretty nice. Oh, but those guys are purple now. That's the issue. I'll try and find in between. Yeah. Somebody was like not so happy about the yellow yellowish ships. That's not bad. I suppose says I was amazed you Skyped with Germany from the west coast while streaming to the east coast. I have a very Good bandwidth here. <laughs> yeah, man, your tech is brilliant. <laughs> well, this, this house is like I've, we're in the 21st century, and this house. <laughs> 15 megabits up, mm -hmm. and 300 megabits down. That's really good. Third of a gig speed, so it's very very fast. So that is closer. I'm not really happy with that color. I also blame the cats, Nathan. <laughs> Ooh, that color is... Uh... Reset. Yeah, bring that up a bit, and bring the saturation down a bit. Should be affecting it in real time. No! <laughs> oh, the saturation's too far down. Right there. Because that's a really... I think that's a good color. That's on the screen. Right. Oh, sorry. Can I sit in front of this one? Yep, you just can't lean back in. <clears throat> okay. Well, that will force me to have good posture. That's fine. Okay, I think I've got a good better color now? You guys can tell me. Blame the cats. Blame is going on the cats for bad color on the screen. They can't defend themselves. <laughs> and Steven says... It looks peachy now. <laughs> the, the console is NTSC. And never the same color. That's what mm -hmm. it stands for. <laughs> Much better. I play tested over a composite and it was fuzzy. <laughs> yeah, composite could be quite fuzzy. Looks peachy now, as in the color peach. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's not. It's a little bit more orange. Yeah? Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> I can't. I can't get it. What's up? 
it's also like we don't have the most sophisticated like color correction thing. I'm going to get you to do some color correction <laughs> on this at some point because I do have color bar, a color bar oh, yeah, cartridge. I could, I could definitely do that. Yeah. That wouldn't be hard. We'd have to like see what the what the process is. It would just be a matter of us mucking about for an hour and I bet you we could do it. Yeah. So I think the color representation on here is quite nice. Yeah. Like the whites are really clean whites and the reds, like all oh, those are primary <laughs> colors. I suppose it says it's more representative than that yellow green. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's Aww. it's closer. Like that's this color is what Erlen oh, does for a living, so look at, look at the scorpions. Sorry. They're gone. Yeah, they're very they're quite orange. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, the reds are really red. Uh, I'm like fighting. Well, that's what color correction is. You're fighting multiple things, pulling in multiple directions. Correct. And these are quite like unsophisticated tools you have here. The correct color correction stuff. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's nice to have them in the basic form, but actually that's a little bit better. Yeah. Now it's not so extreme. That's why we need to add palette support to Stella. Everyone was saying that they never look like the original console, not realizing there's probably no two consoles or TVs that look the same. Yes. That's true. Yeah. Everybody does. TV is oh. a huge, huge factor. Yes, yes I do. Mm. But I need to put it on the proper. Proper. No. No. There. Standard. Two player. Yeah, we Standard can do two player. player. That's part of the fun of color correction, though, is that like no TV, no two TVs are the same. And also, what this, what people want awesome. and assume is better, is often actually not from a colorist perspective. They're like brightness to the max, <laughs> contrast to the max, yeah. saturation, <laughs> to more the max. saturation, and, please. And that's not necessarily wrong, but it's just also one of those things where it's like there's a lot of factors, and it also depends on the time of day. Like one <laughs> time, totally. Like if you're, if there's it's sun, if, if there's no light in the room, it's going to be very. Very different than if there's like sunshine shining in because it's reflection that's, off of that's, the surface. That's very true. And that'll affect the color and the contrast and the brightness. Do you know if our eyes adjust? Oh, they do too. Different that's part of at the, night? They, that's part of the nightmare. Um, <laughs> 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 it's all part of the nightmare, man. Well, it's true because, um, uh, and as a colorist, if you're color correcting something, your eyes will actually instantly correct to whatever oh, you're looking at. That's right. So you have to go quickly because you have auto white balance in our in our brain. Yeah, is it in our? Yeah. It's in our brain. It's in our brains. Yeah. The other thing that's interesting is when we get to low light. I mean, there's rods and cones, and essentially when we shift over to rods, we see less color. We see colors slightly differently. So generally, people you wouldn't be seeing something yeah. like you'd, you'd be but rare that you'd watch something with like just your rods going oh but yeah like yeah. If, if it were like oh, if we're something were dim car. and like completely at night then like, that would change it massively why am i killing all the things ah! <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry you're oh, no, so good. apparently i'm an idiot <laughs> Am I doing so well? I'm like, oh, oh no, right. I have done this. I have like, done exactly is, what you had Why is my happened. ship not going in the direction I'm directing yeah, it to? Yeah, yeah, that happened to me. <laughs> uh, uh, I thought we were doing co-op mode. Uh, no, oh, no, there's only one, one ship on the screen. No, no, no. Yeah, what's no, weird no, is co-op mode only, only starts that way. No, but if you do standard, it doesn't start that way. No, no. You have to release a person. You have to release the other person. Yeah, that's the that's the oh, baby mode. Uh, kids mode. Gotcha. The kids mode. I like kids fun. mode. Yeah, kids mode's fun. Let's me play like the big kids uh, <laughs> for a little while at the beginning. Although I did get my ship one time. <laughs> Dude, Splendid Nut said just sent you a palette demo room to adjust colors if you need it. Oh! And he said nice. there's a little color uh, pod inside the 2600 console that you should, uh, that you should probably emulate too. Did you read that last part? Um, there's a little color, color pod. P-O-T. Oh no, the color is beautiful out, out of the console. Yeah. It's, yeah. Just, it's just translating it... Oh, it looks terrible. Um, <laughs> translating it... Just to the stream because um, OBS is uh, changing its slightly. What in the hell is happening? <laughs> no, sandwich. that's how the game works. And I've seen it. And it's, and it's, it's, the guy comes in and you shoot yourself. You know, there's oh, no one way time that they're not, they're not the doing some and then myself can to stream this stuff. Well, Especially if that's very... before it compresses it right there. Yeah. Oh, 
ships in one ship. Back here. Ah. I didn't know there was a color pod inside the 2600. That's very cool. There's actually a pallet. You'll have to as well. emulate opening up the case with a screwdriver too. <laughs> this is uh, Azure. Yeah. And yeah, and the hilarious thing about this is, I mean, if you're playing on a, uh, a like a CRT, it's going to be very different. It is. <laughs> so that's also part of the interesting thing too. And then also, you know, because analog is just a very different way of processing color specifically. Yeah, that's funny. The on there, like Tanya said, the scorpions, they they don't look orange-ish. They look orange. Yeah, they do. Orange. bright orange, yeah. like no. clearly orange. Oh, the, I did, I just want to set it back to the way it was. The only thing that was bad was the white. Yeah, now, All the yeah. Just, now, now just the red everything. looks magenta. <laughs> now everything is everything's just, yeah. terrible now. I think I'm just gonna set it back after I finish playing. Then we can do it properly. Oh my god. John has to change that. The, the, the spinning around? Because it it's not like the it arcade. It is challenging. It's it is not challenging. like the arcade at all. No, it's not. Which, the arcade which, doesn't where spin. They, where they like kind of kamikaze you? Is that well, they're, he shoots and comes down at the same time and hides behind his bullets um, in this version. Like you watch. He shoots, shoots. There you go. You can do it. I guess if you stay on the left hand side. Yeah. But in the arcade, it's so easy. So easy to get your shit back. Yeah, um, as you said, I wonder if anyone has modeled the 2600 to put the color uh, control on the outside. Very oh, I bet they have. Yeah. That would be handy to have that little plot um, turning thing. I haven't died, but I've lost no, two you lives. Haven't. Yeah. <laughs> Which is terrible! Because <laughs> it's all my terrible fault. Terrible. No! Die! But um, if you notice, they shoot where you are. So if you keep edging over, as they shoot, bullets will never reach you. Mm. Uh, and same with them diving at you, too. They do drift, though, towards you. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. Slightly better than we did so far. Because like, because <laughs> well, yeah, everyone's got their their place, you know. Some people are good at different games, so it's like it's cool to, for them to get to showcase like people with the highest skill in the areas to get to hear. Like, yeah, it is always good to watch somebody who's good at it than than constant failure. Like, oh, dying, dying, dying. We had complaints earlier on. Mm -hmm. um, not today, but. Way, <laughs> er way early when we first started doing this stream is like, you guys don't prepare, you suck at the game. I'm very good. <laughs> I don't suck at games. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Some games I'm not great at. Well, Black a lot Formers of games you're playing for the first good. time, so you can't... Uh, that too. It's not, um, and, it's not the I, type of stream where you've been practicing for the last six months and 
that's that I think that was the realization that they needed to have is that we're playing brand new games that yeah. we've never played before and we don't want to be good at them. We want to um we want to like the play them. Yeah. Oh, this one's so hard this this bonus life level. Is there... yeah. The patterns are so Erratic? Yeah. To me, the, the most hilarious thing is like, ah, also for some of these people, like these are games that you can just hold the so button. many times. Yeah. Uh, and like, nope. And like for me, like I played Galaga. It worked for me. Never. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. it's like I'm, I'm having to play for You're the first the time what someone's maybe done for like. Or I don't. Maybe. I don't have rapid. Maybe rapid fire was on accidentally. It doesn't work now. Nope. Oh, oh it does. Something. Oh, it does. But that's yeah. bad. Bad news. Uh, well, no, it's just that you need to time when you press it, but oh. once you press it, once you press it, you are generally holding it down. That's true. It's just a case of changing from... Yeah. You know. You know. You know. Oh. Not you. Next one. Next one. You. Oh, it's so much faster. Everything's in hyper mode now. <laughs> Just because you're layering the game? The audio is pretty remarkable for the 2600. Yes. Oh, yeah, the Holy audio in this. Yeah, man. Mike House did an yeah. amazing job yeah. in this. I think he he converted somebody who had done... I knew it. I was Oh, I get to cornered. play now! Yeah, I died! It's two player! Oh, you're playing two player? Yes! Yeah. <laughs> yes. Ah! Oh. oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, this is like arcade, so close to the arcade sound. It's unbelievable. Oh, shoot. Like, it's I think not I've... a trivial thing. That's no. serious work went oh, into that. It man. is. And I think I've said it before that at many points, like almost always when I'm playing this game, I forget that I'm playing an Atari 2600. It feels like I'm just playing the arcade version of, of Galaga. When did you first play it in the arcade? Do you remember? Oh, when it was <laughs> when it was out in How the eighties, early eighties. At that point, um, like a teenager or like no, a no. kid. I would have been. Oops, I, oh no, I have no lives left. Oh, it's my ship. Give back my ship. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotta be on this side. This is not easy. Shit. Oh no. <laughs> what did I get? Level twelve. What score though? Hundred thousand? Not even. Not hundred thousand. Close, I think you're like 80. Oh, that's not yeah, bad. Oh. We'd like to get over 100. That's right. right. I have to lean on you because I can't lean back. Here, just... just... That helps a little. Mm -hmm. you, it's, it. it's between the cushions. It's... Yeah, that's better. Oh, oh, oh nice you pushed fast. us. Oh, we're not even on Don't here because this is the... Uh, I'm not touching it. Oh, oh I suppose this said Galaga and Pac-Man 8K are, are spot on. I did, uh, I, I, I did not do either. I did Draconian. Oh, I thought you did some conversion of the Galaga sounds um, from somebody who had worked on them previously. But I am guessing, I guess that is not correct. Um, oh yeah, Pac-Man 8K. I can't, I, oh, I can't wait for that to come out on cartridge. That one's really, really good conversion. Or port. Um, that's the one that has the cornering. Yeah. The slight cornering that it emulates of the arcade. Um, because all other Pac-Man for the 2600s before that had very sharp corners. <clears throat> FYI for any developers still around, the next thing I will need to work on in the next release is generating a disassembly for multi-bank ROMs. There's currently no tool that can do this automatically. Ah. I suppose I love your Draconian. Yeah, the uh, audio on Draconian is amazing. Because it has voice in it. Oh, good job. Yeah, the ar arcade for Pac-Man 8K is disturbingly accurate. <clears throat> uh, Ross Sir Catlegs did Galaga's audio. I think Sir Catlegs is a subscriber. Ooh, that's zero what you do the first time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Erlen is starting to look sleepy. No, it's just because I'm yes, on the edge is. of the edge of the frame. <laughs> <laughs> Needs his coffee. Needs a coffee. No, I'm phone. good. It's just it's good? just that I'm I'm right now on the no, distorted end coffee. of the picture. Oh. There's coffee upstairs. Oh, and it's all. Oh. When you're no longer totally I'll get you some ass. coffee. Yeah. No, it's just, it's, just, uh, it's just terrible lens. Yeah, the way that lens science works is the hardest lenses to manufacture are wide-angled lenses. Mm. And so, like, you're going to spend almost double or triple the amount to get a good one. Mm. And so, um, and really, like, the 
when you get anything past 24 or lower, yeah. you enter into a zone where there's almost no lenses in the world that are really that great without spending like hundreds of thousands of dollars. And um, and then also the aperture really affects that hugely. Uh, so we're stopped down, we're not even wide open. So it's just one of those things. And there's, um, I, actually, I, I guess. Thank goodness. If we had a Carl Zeiss, like 13 millimeter Zeiss. lens that yes. costs like $30,000, <laughs> We would be we like, we, we would look at it and be like, oh, that's still not quite there because <laughs> it's it's the way that optics work; it overstretches the the frame. So just unfortunately, we're like, we're back to do a quarter. Oh. But um, it's, luckily, nobody really shoots with wide angles too much because it's really weird looking. Oh, totally, and that's also yeah. why people go to larger formats because uh, a larger format allows you to have a lens that's actually optimized. Mm. So, like for example, if you shoot like in like IMAX, like a like a oh, fifty millimeter lens is a wide really lens, there. and that's the benefit of going because at Wider. a certain point, you it just like we just can't do it. Tanya is rocking this game. I was Buddhist. until about a second ago. <laughs> yeah. And then it all fell it's apart. Not my best, it's not my best round of Galaga, I have to say. Zora said I never knew how to no. properly play this game until Zero Page Homebrew streamed it. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. It's a very nice compliment. Yeah. Um, now we're going to move on to oh, the next game. <laughs> yeah, because what is it? It's a Tamron? <clears throat> yeah, it's crap. Nobody, garbage. Nobody's like it's a garbage lens. There's nobody anywhere that's like, I really want to get one of those Tamron. <laughs> that's, that's the look I'm looking for. <laughs> I've never heard. Started in garbagey. No. That's someone being like, I really need an RC cola. That's what I'm craving <laughs> right now. Oh, it's you one of those add your RC name, colas. Tanya. You can put no. your name in. Yeah. Um. Said so I just mashed the buttons. We've all done that. Yeah. That's how I play Street Fighter. That's how exactly I play Street Fighter too. It's like I don't know any of the moves. This guy's gonna kill me. Hopefully, I can pull off some random moves. Probably very loud, actually. Echoing. What's going on? Sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I have a You can see that. Oh, okay. So, we're gonna move on to Amoeba Jump. Oh, dude, that's my favorite. Oh, so yeah. Famous. Jerry RC was awesome. Hell yeah. Jerry RC. <laughs> okay. Let's go back to the video camera. Oh my god. I think there's more than... See, I'm fine, actually. It's really... I, um, I think it needs a, a wipe soft. down. I'm going to give it it's a wipe really down. Soft. I'll just also just pull that, that filter off and that'll help. Uh, yeah. Because, like, that's... Oh, maybe. Because it's also... You're shooting through <laughs> maybe not an awesome UV filter. Oh, I'm sure it's the cheapest one I could find. We might be. It's quite a view. Uh, no, you can put it back on. It's the lens. It's exactly the same. <laughs> it was still, <laughs> still terrible looking. Right now we're in a skating video. That's right. I was say. The Beastie Boys. It's like when they used playing. to put Vaseline on the lenses, so the old actresses would yeah. look younger. Like, oh yeah. I'm not doing this. I have to say. <laughs> Who's up? Well, Darcy here. hasn't played in a while. Why don't you shift over? Life is a dream, Ooh. friends. And this is the dreamy side of Zero Page Homebrew. That's right. Oh, it is Amoeba Jump, and I'm going to change the graphic so people so we get the right one. There we go, and I'm going to change this because the colors are terrible. Terrible representation. Okay, let's turn it off. There we go. Oh, that was terrible. There we go. No, I was trying to fix it, and I just made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ha, somehow I managed to fit between those two platforms. Slide them. Oh, you have to be careful when you're leaning back. Am there. I actually squishing it right now? Well, hey James, that might be I'd better. have to throw away the monitor if you break it. I just stopped it down a bit. It's, so it's not it's better. much better. It's, it's, it's full screen, I didn't see. I'm just curious. It's a little better. It's a little less dreamy. Yeah. There we go. So this is made by Dianoid. This is, uh... There's a lot, lots of jumping in this game and not many amoebas. Mostly one amoeba. That's a good game. Oh, I love this game. I'm gonna bring the stuff upstairs. Just That's why it's amoeba okay. jump, yeah, not amoebas jump. Okay. Place. Do you want more water, dude? Uh, yeah. Ah! Oh, it's pretty full, actually. Okay, cool. Do you want anything else? My turn. Dude? But... Okay, you can go. Um, no, there's lots of okay, and candy and... Ah! 
<laughs> we'll go now. Uh, back in an hour. What? <laughs> I mean, oh, everybody. When, I mean, when your when your game. Oh, over. I see. No, uh -huh. no, this is not a long game. Uh, can you show me how to oh, do coffee. the yeah, machine? Yeah. Oh, I'm by myself. Yeah. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> I'm abandoned. Everybody can just watch me play Amoeba Jump. They deserted me. Oh, that thing disappeared. What was the score I'm shooting for? 21,000? Gotta get my... Oh, see, it did it again. I gotta get back used to this game. You lost your crew. I'm sorry, I'm back. By myself. Not even cats. <laughs> the cats oh, abandoned back. me, too. Back. Oh, no. <laughs> I guess it's my turn next, so that's good yeah. timing. What are the dots? I don't remember the dots. Uh, those are to get letters. Remember? Oh, yeah, definitely. That makes a lot of sense. What a cool game this is. Oh, so simple, so cool, 4K. Um, this is one of those games, too, where, like, you start blaming the controller. You're like, oh, this controller oh, doesn't work. You need a good work. controller. You like, know? It has to be precise. If it's pulling too hard in one direction... What's the one that's, like, um, it's kind of like, it's almost a, a, like, red trigger on the right, and it's kind of, like, uh... Uh, what's the one? And it's so much jerkier. Oh, the, just the controller. I'm not, I don't know the name of it. Uh, the one we've used it before. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of got a red trigger it's, on the uh, side. An Epix uh, XJ500, something like that. That's the, that's my favorite one for this one. Uh, I think that's it's a, probably a good one because there's no button pressing. That's a terrible joystick for firing. Yeah, but it's amazing for this game because you just oh, have to move. Yeah. Um, and I remember when we were doing the twenty. Uh, what was it? You had your video game night. Yep. Yeah. And I remember I was playing it on that controller, and it took a bit of learning because this this controller is amazing for like like the combination of the two. But I find the controls can sometimes betray you, and oh, this is a game yeah. where if you're betrayed even a little you bit, get so mad, it's over. Because it's like game's oh. over. Yeah, there's no leniency in this game. You either hit the hit the mark, or yep. you don't. Or hit you're the mark. done. And now it's no double jumping. This is a game, this is really fun to see this one go through development. Oh, and yeah. really get refined. Because it was, it was so, it was, there was Damn points it. in it where I was like, oh, this game's like had kind of like its threshold. Like, I was like, okay, well, this is as good as it's going to get. And then all of a sudden it just crossed that threshold into just an amazing game. Because oh, there was a yeah. time when it, you could just spring all the way up. Yeah, and there were no letters. It was all random. Like, I love the, like, I love the fact that they added the, like, uh, the disappearing platforms and the letters and, and then the different types of spring. Deanoid, am I correct? Is yes. that the guy? Yeah. Deanoid. Oh, Epic X uh, uh, 1500. Thanks, I suppose, to. Yes, Epic's joystick. Yeah, that's right. That's that's I like that one. Oh, now I need a green, uh, a green one to rocket myself. Yes. Up. And I love that it flashes, too. Yeah, it's getting intense, man. It is. <laughs> They're getting sparse. And you just have to get more and more precise. Yep. Where are the green ones? There you go. I don't think it works on this one. Does it? Yeah, it does. It works yeah. with any. This is dangerous, though. Because you don't know where you're going to land. Totally. But it's so worth it. Oh, yeah. It's so Huge points. It. Damn it. Do you want to go again? Do another one. No, 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 no. That was uh, long enough. Okay, cool. That was long enough. Oh, you spelled it amoeba. Yes. You need to gather all the letters of amoeba at the bottom. You can see the dots. Oh. And and so then once you get amoeba, the... you go on a spring, either the red or the green, and it rockets you up and gives you massive amounts of points. So that's really your goal. Your goal is to not die, but... That's your main goal is, and especially you can time it up so that you can bypass certain hard parts. Like if you get to the white ones, if you get just before the white, all white. And see, like, that's so smart because I wanted to go for it, but it's uh, like an issue with it is that, like... It disappears off the exactly, screen. Exactly, so there's only so much you can do. Oh, oh I saw you were going for it, but then it And then I forgot passed. that we had our little white... Oh, what we're yet, what we're using right now is a Sega Genesis Arcade Power Stick, which is my that's the all go around best favorite one. It's like the workhorse, man. Yeah, I think I think yeah, this is the one we play on pretty much 
I like most the, of the time. I like the buttons. You don't have to hold it in your hand. It can be in your lap. It's relaxing. It feels like you're at an arcade, too. That's yeah. the cool part. Because there's not that many controllers anymore that have that kind of arcade feeling. No. Um, and that's and then I definitely feel like I'm at the arcade when I'm playing on and, this one. And most of the ga these games are, you know, arcade-style games um, where it's uh, quick playing and it's just a really sturdy joystick and you can really feel it's really got some weight to it, so I, I love this joystick for all-around playing. But yes, the, the Epix one, if you want super precision, um, especially, it's good for puzzle games, or because it's very clicky. Yes. Left, right, up, down, just like for this one. You need precision movement, I would definitely recommend the Epix. Unless... You're pressing the fire button a lot. That's right. It's the worst fire button It hurts button your fingers. Like, after a while, you're going to, like... Because it's a wraparound fire button. You're going to regret. It's it's not a normal fire button. It's very, very bad. Bad news. Should I get the bigger fan upstairs? The tall, tall one? To yes. The air and put in the hallway yeah. and point it out. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah, we just don't normally have, like, um... Four people and go for 12 hours. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a... Honestly, it, even two people with these lights, this room gets really... It's cool. an exceptional By situation. The end, yeah. Whoa. Whew. See, this is where it starts to get stressful. Mm hmm And this is a game where you gotta... You can't think. You have to just, like... You have to... You gotta you, feel you it. You have to have an know. instinct. You gotta know your movements, and you can't, you can't double guess. No. Because if you start double guessing, um, second guessing yourself, you are going to start jumping into nothingness. Exactly. Because you don't have time to turn around. You gotta think ahead, but at the same time. Yep. Always know what your next move is. And go for ones that are slightly higher than what you would think you need to get because things go off the screen. Yeah, you just don't know with this one. Yeah. Nice. Just need a B. Uh, you're in Rocket City. Shit. You can loop around. Yeah, I, I, I was just trying to figure out what to do there because it's like... I mean, there's a downside to looping around the screen. Yeah, there's... Which is like you don't really know where you are. And you have to do it sometimes. Like here, like I have here, to yeah, do it. you do. You still get points for those, even though you're not spelling it out. Not many, but... There's your B. That's what you need. Okay, okay. Time for rocket. Come on. I just need one rocket, and I have to do it. You yeah. have to do it. Okay, there yay! It is. The nice. dream's alive, friends! <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> Can't remember my score. I don't remember. It was around that. It was around seven. Yeah. Did you ever make it to 10? Weren't we trying that at one point on an I older version? Oh, oh so there we go. I swear we made That's it. That's okay, man. Uh, you want to do one? Not sure. I haven't played this in a while. It's there you not going to be. It's not going to be. Thousand. No worries. Um, Missouri says, I usually play zero page homebrew in the background when I code. Oh, that's oh, awesome. That's awesome. the best time to do it. Oops. Death by indecision. That is an ex exactly the... That's what happens. That's you exactly. cannot... Um, you have to be decisive in this game. And as I said, you eventually you just start blaming the controller. You're like, this is a bad, I need a different controller. <laughs> it's obviously not. That's it's like not a musician me. being like, this this guitar's out of tune. That's why I sound the bad strings. today. <laughs> the strings are stretching. You need to restring that was, it. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was like a Darcy <laughs> move. <laughs> game starts immediately fall off the first platform. <laughs> well, you just don't worry. You just gotta get in a rhythm. Oh, Dan Ivy says, I, I guess like I missed Dan Kitchen. We'll watch on the archive when I have a chance. Yeah, I think he was on oh at 4 gosh, p.m. That was a cool interview, man. That yeah. was a very cool one. I mean, he's been around in the industry for so long that he has so many great stories. Well, yeah. And insight into, you know, what's <laughs> happening. Hashtag legend. Oh, yeah. Is the starting screen the same every time? Yes. Ah. But only just the starting screen. Then it yeah. goes random. Yeah, that's the thing that Such I Such a replayable in. game, man. Mm -hmm. This one? Oh, yeah. So our score to beat in this is 21,000. Wow. I think I think <laughs> my personal well. best was like 12 or 13. Yeah. I'm pretty sure because... But, but that was after me sitting and playing for like two hours back to back on my own. Mm. One level? Oh, we have to... Yeah. Stop and start. No, but I mean not two hours, but I mean two hours of like me just zoned into the game, and then the best I could get, come up with was like twelve or thirteen. So after the next time you die, I, I need you to stop. That way. I know. I always forget that too. I always die because you, as you say, <laughs> forget these little tidbitty things. 
It's like you have to practice by uh, intentionally crossing that barrier you back do. and forth. And there is the definitely okay. a little... Okay, don't, don't do anything. I have to do a break. Oh, to fix the color? No. Oh, it's just because it's six. Yeah, six. Oh, yeah. 